bless all of you it is well with you feel free to share and invite somebody to listen and they will be blessed father lord we thank you for today we give you all the glory all the praise all the honor thank you for bringing us together once again to fellowship in your presence jesus take all the glory all the honor take over the service in the name of jesus holy spirit speak through me use me for your glory so your children can be blessed. I soak everyone, including myself, in the blood of Jesus. And those who are yet to listen, Father, draw them so they can come, listen, and be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. How is everybody doing today? It is well with you. I think a lot of you kind of know what I'm going to say when I come online. Huh? God bless all of you. How is everyone doing today? It is well God bless you for watching. Can somebody tell me some of the things I say when I come on? Because you guys are used to listening to me. Huh? How is everybody doing today? God bless you. It is well with you. I love you. Wow. I've been saying these things for seven years, going to eight years now. God bless. Always blessing. Always blessing you guys. Always blessing you. Somebody say, I say, Apostle had a dream. <laughs> oh my God. Somebody say, I, I, I love you. All right. Okay. Feel free to share the video. All right. You got it. You got it. It is well with you. That's right. Okay. You got it. You got it. <laughs> it is well with you. All right. God bless you. And it is well with you. Feel free to share. That's right. Feel free. It's a choice. Wow. All right. It is good. It is good. How is everybody doing? God bless you. I love you. That's your apostle right there. That's right. How are you doing today? It is well with you. God bless you. I love you. I just want to put everything together. <laughs> oh, my God. God bless you. I love you guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. So I, I came online earlier to pray in tongues for a few minutes. I was not even intending to come online for that one. I was in God's room fellowshipping, and I had my son there with me. And while I was praying with my son or talking to my son, I felt the power of God come on me so heavily. And I just started praying and I told him, come on, let's pray, right? 
and we started praying and suddenly I just started speaking some new tongues and Jesus told me to go live I was not preparing for that even my son said he was surprised when he opened his eyes and saw that I was live he had to leave the room I said why did you leave when I was done I had no idea what happened to me it came so heavy on me and Jesus had some messages for you guys saying don't be afraid he's with you and come to him for all of you who are um, depressed worn out all you that labor heavy laden. I don't know how many of you listened to that it was like 21 minutes and I led people to Christ that audio was a miracle because I was in the room with my son we were just fellowshipping in fact I've listened to it like four times <laughs> it was powerful tongues I did God is so amazing. When you fellowship daily with God, you'll be amazed all the time. And it was so short. I played it on repeat for until I even went to take a nap, had some powerful dreams. And I came out and God was just talking to me about, you know, my vindication. And boom, once I woke up, I had two ladies send me testimonies of my vindication book and I'm like father what is going on (laughs) wow look at some people listen to it twice it's not me guys it was Jesus Christ all the way even towards the end I said I I think this is what Jesus wanted or something because Michael was in the room with me we were praying I even made him read um, three chapters um, Matthew 11 12 and 13 Like we were fellowshipping. It just came on me, but because before that I was, um, I was praying to Jesus Christ and I was like, Lord, you know, I need you. And you know, I'm always needing Jesus Christ in my life. And um, before you know, he took me to Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come on to me all year that So I was reading it and personalizing it and accepting and receiving the word because God speaks to me a lot using scriptures. I've told you guys this before. That's why I care you to keep reading your Bible. And then I had a powerful moment with it, not knowing that when I start praying with my son, a heavy anointing was going to come on. It was so heavy. I was tingling from head to down. My tongues were different. (laughs) I didn't even know what happened. I didn't even know my son had left the room. (laughs) <laughs> when I opened my eyes I didn't see him again I don't even know when he left I didn't hear the sound of the door it was so powerful I'm so glad I was able to share it with you guys for 21 minutes because I have many powerful moments with God and I don't always get to come live for them but there are some that I'll be pushed to come on and that's why I like to carry my phones with me just in case because I never know I could just wake up. And the the funny thing is when I woke up from sleep, while I was in the bathroom washing my face, I saw a vision of me kneeling down before God's chair and praying. Even though I was tired, I dragged myself to his room. Just like I saw the vision, knelt down and prayed. And I prayed and I spoke in tongues and I read the scriptures. I didn't know a heavy anointing was about to fall on me. It was so powerful, guys. I'm still trying to recover from it. It was too much. So all of you, I love that you are always watching and always receiving and staying on fire for God. It's not going to be in vain. God is doing something with you. Even in that audio, God said he's doing a quick work on somebody and it will surprise them. And when I was listening, I'm like, yes, I receive it. In fact, it's like I felt like the whole audio was for me. (laughs) I was receiving all of these prayers and declarations and I was just happy. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can save it whenever you want to pray a short prayer, maybe 15 to 20 minutes in tongues. I have a lot of praying in tongues, um, audios and videos. It's good to save them. So whenever you want to pray, it will help you, right? 
It will help you to be able to pray. So when I woke up from sleep, because I had to take a nap, I was so weak after that um, encounter. I came and slept on the couch here in the living room. And plus, I'm still doing my seven days fast. So today is day five. And day fives, and normally in my fastings on day fives, I usually have like powerful encounters. I wasn't expecting what I had today. So to God be the glory. So when I woke up, I was so weak. I was so weak. Like somebody who has been praying like for hours or something. But God started speaking to me about my vindication. My vindication book. Because you know, God came and told my story in 2020. And vindicated me from the false prophet that was my spiritual father. It was a complicated issue that God himself had to tell the story himself. And a lot of my members were able to get the book. All I did was I turned that audio where God spoke out of my mouth for over two hours. I turned it into a book and I left it just the way it was, except that I didn't put all the laughter in it. So I didn't really write the book. It was mostly what came out of my mouth. And God had said the book was going to be so powerful and people will use the book and miracles will happen and So we've seen a lot of testimonies in the past, you know, but I have not, um, many of my members already have the book. So, and then the force prophet are taking me to court because of my exposing of him. And, um, he had an issue with the book and everything. So every, we've had a lot of battle, both spiritual and physical because of that vindication book. Some people said it was a demon that spoke through me. Some people said it's not God. But I know it was God because I didn't speak those words that came out of my mouth. But God has, over time, he has um, proven to the wall that he's the one that spoke through the book. And today when I woke up, I woke up with two um, testimonies. And God started telling me about the book and the kind of um, um, anointing, the kind of power that he has put in me. And in everything that um, is connected to me. And he gave me a scripture to read the book of Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. It said, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. And he wanted me to put my name in there. God gave Belema the power to perform unusual miracles. King James Version says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Belema. Hallelujah. So I was studying that. Verse 12 says, When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched the skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases, and evil spirits were expelled. So Apostle Paul had an unusual anointing to the point that just handkerchief or like a cloth that would just touch him or merely when people use that cloth and place it on sick people, they were healed also because they believe. And I've had testimonies like that here where I'll give people dresses or wigs that I've worn or something that belongs to me. And because they believe when they, they're they sick or anything, they use it and God heals them and they give testimonies. So it's similar to what I'm reading in the Bible. And that shows that God is the same God that we read about in the Bible, is the same God that we pray to today. So to God be the glory. So God gave me this scripture and he was telling me about the book. I don't know how many of you have this book. When was the last time you read this book? But he was telling me that everything he's told me about this book is still going to happen. Whether the false prophet fought it or not, that he's still going to use this book to deliver a lot of people, to heal a lot of people. And he says, no devil, nobody can stop it. And I was like, wow, because, you know, I've been through a lot since I started to expose the false prophet. And, you know, I'm just tired of all of these (laughs) battles and stuff. But God is not tired. God is not 
tired. God is not done. And when God says he will do something, he's going to do it. Nobody can stop it. It doesn't matter if you are tired. God's not done. Whatever he said will happen in your life, it's going to happen. Whether you like it or not, you understand? God's not done. Whatever he, he says will happen, will happen. The other day he gave me a word, Numbers 23, verse 19. And I posted it on all my social media platform. The ERV translation, it says, God is not a man. He will not lie. God is not a human being. His decisions will not change. If he says he will do something, then he will do it. If he makes a promise, then he will do what he promised. And this word is for all of you. Whatever God has promised over your life, God's going to do it. It doesn't matter how many years go by. Sometimes you may think he's not going to do it anymore because it's been a long time. But he didn't even tell you what year he was going to do it anyway. You didn't know how many years you had to wait for it to happen. So when you're thinking it's over, God is like, no, it's not even started yet. <laughs> I know the time. I know when I'm going to do this. It's not time yet. When the time comes at the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. So God said, whatever he's promised that he will do with my vindication book, he's going to do it. And the world will watch and see and it says it's like a book of prophecy or a prophetic book that things that he said that the enemy will fight it to prove that it wasn't God that spoke or this and that. But the more they fight it, the closer they bring it to what God says will happen. I don't know if somebody understands, right? <laughs> so when I woke up with this um, testimonies, one of them is um, a lady from Kenya. I even told her to do another video, but I still have the one she just did. She said, when I came to Kenya, not this time that I came for the um, Uhuru Park or something. She said, one of the times that I came to Kenya, I gave her um, my vindication book, right? And that she, she placed it on her belly and, you know, she was able to get pregnant. And she said she had not been able to conceive but because of what I said about the book she did that she believed and she was able to have a baby I was like oh my god people actually really believe in this anointing let me show her testimony she's gonna make a better video today but this is the one I woke up to see let's watch blessings my queen I'm here to testify of what the Lord has done for me Last year when you came to Kenya, you blessed me with a vindication book and you say that whoever believes and prays, if you have cysts, they'll melt away. If you're, you're not capable of getting children, you, you will get children. I believed and I prayed with a vindication book on my belly. I, I had polycystic cysts. And it had caused me infertility, so I, I couldn't get children. And when I prayed, <laughs> I, got, I, I conceived this baby. The first scan I went for, the doctor told me that the cyst was still there and the baby was still in my belly and there were no chances for my baby to survive. And it's, it was the only option I had was to either terminate my baby or my life would be in danger. And I told God, God, you've given me this child. I'm, I'm not going to, to terminate it. So I kept the baby. And the second scan I went, there, were, there was no cyst. And I'm so grateful for, for that miracle. I received my baby this month on the 12th. That was also on my birthday. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Queen, for teaching us to believe in God and for what you've been doing for us. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So you see, she said she couldn't, she couldn't conceive because she had ceased. But because of what I said about the vindication book, she believed. 
and she placed it on her stomach and prayed and she was able to conceive and everything went well. She was able to have a child. This is a, somebody that they told could not have a baby. But just because she believed in the vindication book and she did what I said that people should do and believe. I, I was just like, wow. And God says that whatever he said will happen with the book is going to keep doing it. He will keep honoring it. That even though years have passed, that a lot of people are going to receive mighty healing and deliverance. Those who believe in my vindication, I'm like, wow. Because vindication was in 2020 um, April. And we've been through a lot from that time. And now, you know, God gave me a, a, like a difficult assignment to expose a man that I used to call a spiritual father. And I obeyed God. I did it. And God said he was a voodoo priest. And even though I saw that he had a lot of charms in one of my dreams, I was not afraid. I just kept obeying God. I got attacked a lot. My members got attacked, but we obeyed God. And God is still honoring things that he said. This, this um, flyer that I used on the cover has some pages of um, vindication book. This one, the one to the right, at the top right, it says, I, have, I always strengthen her for battles. This was a big one, but there is victory already. That was page 25. I always strengthen her for battles. And it's true, God always strengthens me. Whenever I do programs or anything, it's almost like I didn't go anywhere. I just have this supernatural strength. He said that battle was a big one, but there's victory already. That's the one between me and the false prophet. And then the next one at the bottom is page 55. It says, I am telling the story of my daughter because I have elevated my daughter. I will use her for mighty works. He said, he's telling my story. He has elevated me and he will use me for mighty works. And you guys have seen how God is using me. Right now, we are even seeing God use me just by waving of hands. And people are getting healed by waving of hands. People are getting delivered by waving of hands. Things are happening. And this is God confirming what he said. He said, they will use me for mighty works. And then if you go to the top one to the left, it says, my precious daughter, the apple of my eyes, my chosen one, Belema. And that's page 29 of Vindication. And page 46, the last line, it said, because only her can bring him down. That's one of my favorite um, lines in vindication. So now I'm going to ask all of you. How many of you have your vindication book with you right there? If you have it, type I have it. Because I want to ask you guys a question. If you have your vindication book right there with you, type I have it. God is up to something with this book. God is up to something with this book. I don't know why he's doing all of this. I don't know why um, he's making people send testimonies suddenly about oh, why he's, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm just obeying him. And God is about to put somebody to shame. Somebody that has fought this book so much. Somebody that has said, this is not God. This is a demon. God is about to deal with them. Look at a lady got pregnant. She even showed her testimony video with her child. <laughs> a woman that was told she couldn't get children. And she put vindication book on her belly and prayed. And God did it for her. And that's the unusual anointing that God has given us. Now, God wants me to ask all of you to post your favorite, one of your favorite lines and vindication I'm going to put on the screen. You're going to type one of your favorite statement or line or quotes from vindication from your favorite page. So you put like um, something and then you say vindication um, page 54 or page whatever, line 8 or something so we can find it. And then I'm going to put it on the screen. That means you've been reading your book. You know, we have um, only one book so far besides the Bible. 
we have the vindication book and i didn't really write that book myself it was god that spoke from my mouth and i just turned it into a book because i had a dream and in this dream god gave me a purple and gold material that was so beautiful and he told me to go and give it to vivian um to sew it for me so i held it to my chest and i started going but while i was going people kept trying to stop me say come come and do it here come let me do it come i know i know someone that can help you but i say no god said i should take it to vivian so there was a lot of distraction on the way but i was focused but all the while i had i held it close to my chest and then i went to vivian and i gave it to her and she brought out a tape measurement tape from her pocket a back pocket she started to measure to get to work right away and this man that i named gabriel came and gave her some money and she put it behind her pocket and she was just focused on trying to make me the clothes so when i woke up he told me that i need to turn the audio into a book and vivian will help me publish it and that's how i obeyed and i was able to turn it into a book so even the book was um obedience from a dream that i had I thought it was just going to be in the audio like that but God didn't want it to be forgotten in the audio he needed it to be a book because he said these words are powerful. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that one page 81. What line is that? Page 81. I like that one. I need you guys to put the line line 8 or line 10 so I can find it easily. It says how can she fail when I'm with her? I love that one. That is so good. I think that's line um 14 or 15. How can she feel when I'm with her? Jesus, this is powerful. <laughs> I like this one. I need to start putting quotes from vindication book as my status update. This is God. How can you feel when God is with you? My God. Ah. Look at this one page 57. What line is that, sweetie? She shakes places when she goes in. <laughs> wow, I need to go back and read this book from beginning to the end. Aha, page 94, line 22. But I honor them, bless them even as they obey and put these lines. This is what I heard. He said, "Pick your favorite line. And if you have more than one line you like, post it. I'll put it on the screen." He said, "No one can go against my my word. I think it's my word you meant to write with it, not my God." Line 22. No one can go against my word. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at page 50. What line is this? Some of you as you are hearing this, that spell is being taken off of you. Do you know I'm actually tingling as I'm putting this on the screen? It's like my body is vibrating like I don't know what God is doing in this season. Wow. Page 26 line 10. She is blameless. Oh, I love that. I've always loved the way God called Job blameless. So to hear God say I was blameless, that meant a lot to me. Yeah, that vindication it's it it means a lot to me. You guys don't understand. God came and told my story. I've never seen that happen before anywhere. <laughs> Page 74. What line is this? Do you know my daughter? I kept her in the closet. Yep, I was in the closet for over a year. <laughs> Page 16 can anyone stand against the word of god wow look at this <laughs> wow i like this one page 51 line 8 i have set dates and times for everything yes it must wait till that time these words you if you study the word you will know this is god speaking it sounds just like him these are his words <laughs> page 24 she is my chosen one wow page 21 she has entered a new dimension wow wow look at this one page 66 you guys should be putting the line cuz i'm going to go back and watch this audio and i will hit one and the rest will fall i don't even know we had this in that book he said it will hit one and the rest will fall jesus It's like you strike the uh the uh the shepherd and the sheep will fall. Wow. Page 55. Even her shadow will heal people. That's the unusual anointing. 
Oh my God, I'm tingling. God is so pleased. She is not ordinary. She's not a human being. Vindication book, page 22. Wow. Wow. Page 57. Belama carries power. Belama destroys shrines. And you guys have seen that. I've gone to Bacana. I've prayed. Wow. She destroys the works of the enemy. She shakes places when she goes in. Oh my God. I'm, I don't know. My body is vibrating. I just woke up not too long ago and I, I'm just obeying God by doing this. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. This is, so how can you say that you train somebody and they don't even sound like you? Oh my God. I like that one. Page 75. The last two lines. Wow. Wow. Page 21, line 18 and 19. She's allowed in my presence. She's allowed in the Holy of Holies. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on. Is it a cookie kitty? What did he do to you? Did he do to you? What did he do to you? He used to do me. He used to go and take a deep. He's like, it's like the more I put it on the screen, I, my body just starts to vibrate. Like, I don't know. He can't come on in the mouth. But then he lay out your tea out. Come on, yeah. He no, 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 sick. It did no, 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 I don't know what she come out to get a big to come out. I got a diggy gaga gaya. He no nickel in the hunt. They can dig here that they are that they are that they are that they are. And I was upstairs and I was trying to go downstairs to go meet them. But I noticed that when I walk past, he could be on the day. Like every, every, every light, like there were little light switches or whatever or bulbs, but every light switch or bulb that I pass by, the light will come on. It's it's like it's it's like it's a tick as I'm walking like as I'm walking I'm turning on light my just passing by the switch the light comes on. So there was just so much light coming on as I was walking and passing. I'm trying to go downstairs to go meet them because they were all excited about the song that I made. But I just noticed all the lights which were coming on once I passed by them. I just had this dream like maybe two hours ago. I just woke up not too long ago. And I, I was like, what's going on? And I woke up feeling like I've been praying in tongues all day or something. And he started telling me about my vindication book. And, and I saw these testimonies waiting for me. I don't know what God is doing, but I'm just working in obedience. But I let your will be done in Jesus' name. That she's allowed in my presence. She's allowed in the Holy of Holies. Page 91, line 15 says, Don't worry, soon everything will make sense to you. At first, vindication didn't make sense. But as time went on, we started to understand certain things. Wow. Page 17, line 4 to 5, it said, No one can stand against my word. When I say something, it happens. And I until took up a delay papa body ya da 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 Nere Toto Ekiba Hunt the day and Doro Tonto Yate ya Baba Ya 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 Oh God I don't know what's happening to me today. You see when I say something it happens. Wow Page thirty four, line four and five. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. She's righteous. No one that the afflictions are so many. And many times when I'm like, Father, why am I getting all this? He say, well, many are. The, he always gives me that scripture. I'm like, wow. It's like the enemy wants to afflict us so bad so we can get tired and go back to the wall. But we're not going back to the wall. We've made our choice to stay with Jesus forever. And that's it. So if you're, if you're always going through attacks, remember this. The word of God says, many of the afflictions of the righteous, the Lord will deliver you from all of them. So just keep holding on to God and waiting patiently as he delivers you because God will do what he says he will do. All right? Wow. Look at page 18, line 1. Can anyone stand against my word? I like that one too. Page 110, line 16. Belama came to save a lot of women. Wow. 
page 55 i am god <laughs> i like that wow page 63 oh she will be greater than anyone that has ever existed hmm. when all these things when i read it i'm like hmm. not like I, i i i believe it but i'm just like wow you know <laughs> but when <laughs> when i when i see all the things that i have to deal with i'm like wow greatness doesn't come easy it comes with a big price <laughs> Page 41, she's a child of destiny. Wow. Even her shadow will heal people. Even when she passed by people, they will be healed. Today, when I was passing by the light, they were all coming on. Yeah, the lights were just coming on. And so many people were downstairs waiting for me as I was going to come from upstairs because I had a song and they were all loving the song. It's like God gave me a song. I don't know. But I just had this dream. I've not even written it down yet. I just woke up not too long ago. Wow, page 23. I will shut the mouth of haters. Wow. Wow. Page 30. Almost everyone was speaking against Moses, even Aaron and Miriam. Meaning Moses went through a lot. Even those close to him were criticizing him. I can just imagine what he was going through. Wow. Oh my God page 115 line 9 learn from her oh yeah i like that one and a lot of you are really learning from me because i see how you're handling things god teaches me and i teach it to you wow page 20 i am a consuming fire page 57 line 16 belema carries power wow this is powerful wow page 56 line 2 and 3 she will be the greatest woman of God that has ever existed in the world. Jesus. Wow. Wow. Page page 114. Wow. Line 7. On the count of three, power will come over you. All of you receive power in the name of Jesus. This book carries power. I said, continue your tea, yeah, Papa, yeah, Taya. Hey, I don't know what's going on with me today. <laughs> As I just told you, receive power. I was just praying for you. I said, He don't do no more say on the Neano. No, nobody's just vibrating. <laughs> so much power, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know what he just told me right now? He said that what I saw in the dream was power. And it's the power that is turning on the light. That he has put more power in me. Because I woke up feeling like I've been praying in tongues all day. I was just walking past and all the light bulbs were coming on. I was like, what is going on? He said, yeah. He said, yes, put so much power in me. Oh, God. I saw this dream. They were all wanting to, like, listen to my song. And I was upstairs. I was trying to come meet them. And all the lights, but I just passed. This light will come on. I passed. This, it's like something triggers the light bulbs, and they're just coming on. They're just coming on. Hey, the two Mexico ladies, the Cairoans, the Arabs, the Arabs, the Cairoans, the Cairoans, the Arabs. Ah, they go, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And today is day five of my seven days. He told me to go on seven days, and I'm on day five. And then after that, the next day is the one for the ministry. And whenever he puts me on fasting like this before the ministry, I know something happens. And day five is usually one of the most powerful days for me. Oh, God, thank you so much. I love you so much, Lord. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Uh, uh. <laughs> no wonder he told me he said Easter is it's a celebration. He kept telling me Easter weekend is a celebration. I so for some reason I see a bunch of my members telling me they are coming. I've been giving the hotel link to people. It's like there's a celebration. Okazi even said she had a dream 
that we were celebrating that it was praise and worship a lot of praise and worship it's like a holy ghost encounter and all i could think of was the easter it's like something is happening i don't know what it is like like that like that weekend is gonna be a celebration weekend and we're also fasting everything is just arranged by god and everything is because i had a dream in november i saw the, my ex cousin, I called 911 on him. He said, You can't call 911 on Easter weekend. And then I woke up, I said, What does this mean? That we have a fasting. Help me, Jesus. Heaven's 911. And it's Easter weekend, we're doing it. God is up to something, guys. God is up to something. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be big. Now he's saying he's put more power in me. I saw light bulbs coming on. As I was walking past, they would just switch on. It's like there was something electro electrifying in my body that would just switch on the light. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's like as you guys are writing all these things, it's like reminding me of his promises of over me because the vindication book has a lot of powerful words in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh my God, thank you, Lord. Dedication book, page 37, line 8. He thought it, he could destroy her like he has been destroying them. So this false prophet has destroyed a lot of people. But God has used me to expose him. And people hated me for that, but they are beginning to see that he's not real. And now they know that the assignment I did was dangerous because they wouldn't do it. And now people are not seeing him the way they used to see him. They used to see him as a prophet, but now they know he's fake because no prophet will be sleeping with his, his spiritual daughters. Her heart is so pure. Wow. But you see, I gave my daughter strength, the kind of strength that I've never given anyone. Oh, she'll be greater than anyone that has ever existed. Even a shadow will heal people. Wow, look at all this. Can anyone stand against my word? She's my chosen one. She will deliver a lot of people. You guys have seen a lot of deliverance take place here. The angel of wealth, that was me. I was so happy when I saw that one. <laughs> oh my god wow see god is even coming in people's dream telling them to read vindication book giving them a page to read someone told her to read page 81 she destroys shrines my sheep they know my voice they recognize my voice when i speak they know wow look at all this i don't pick perfect people that's right God qualifies the call. Yep. The ones that he, he calls, he qualifies them. He trains them. He strengthens them. He anoints them. She'll be the greatest woman of God. Her life is to serve me, do my work. <laughs> That's why I'm always doing his work. He doesn't let me go anywhere. I'm always home. I anointed my daughter myself. That the world will see how I sent her myself. She came on a special mission, a special assignment. She's not ordinary. I have heard the cries of my children, just like he heard the cries of the Israelites and he sent Moses. Wow. She suffered a lot of afflictions because she keeps praying for you. Oh, tell me about it. When I pray sometimes for some people, that same night, demons are angry at me. They're like, why did you free this one? Why did you... I get attacked a lot, but God always delivers me. Wow. I told my daughter to come on to come on Facebook to preach online. Wow. I am God. Can anyone stand against my word? She has to overcome all that so she could be stronger. Thank you, Jesus. She will definitely tell the truth because the truth is in her. She carries my spirit. That's right. I don't tell lies. Even before I got saved, I was not known to be a liar. She's blameless, just like Job. Her love for me is what kept her alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Wow. I have vindicated her myself. I love this one. Page 113, verse 9. Hey, Baba. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. Wow. Belema will be the greatest. I don't know when I got to this one. I have vindicated it. I don't know what's going on in the spirit. I don't know. I think I told you guys a few days ago after the um the Connecticut program that night that there was a big shootout, a big war, and I went to hide with a little baby that I was holding. I don't know who they were fighting, what shootout there was, but there was war in the spirit. Looked like something has happened because I was upstairs in my dream. Do you know upstairs is a higher dimension? That's what it means. And people were downstairs waiting for me because I have a song that they all love so much. But as I was coming down, too much power was just turning on all the lights. But I thank you so much. I'm going to tell you guys something that happened yesterday. And I believe that was a test that I passed. I told you guys about Darius yesterday, right? Of how God told me to release him March 6th this uh, month. So I, I, I called him and I told him, God says I should release you. Like he didn't do anything or anything. And he said, wow, he's not surprised because he had a dream in January. 11th that I was going to release him soon and um, he will, God will heal his eyes and he will go to school. I said, why didn't you tell me the dream? He said, well, he was just waiting to see how it was going to turn out. I said, okay, well, I'm glad I obeyed God, right? And um, so there were some things I always worried about him. I'm like, well, the spirit of lust, I noticed even though I pray for you so many times, it's still there. I don't know why. What's going on? Are you opening doors? Or he's because he told us that since he was young, he's always had that spirit, and he's had dreams where somebody poured the spirit of lust on him. But I do believe the anointing is powerful to kick out any kind of spirit. So with him, I'm wondering. So he was just telling me some things that maybe it was this or that. So God, he, he prayed to God to show him what it was. And he had a dream where he was, um, angels were, took him to a surgery room and they were about to do surgery on him. And suddenly some of his family members came into the room and scattered everything and the angels left without doing the surgery. I said, wow, so that's like an open door. Like God wants to do a good work in your life. But family, like his mom doesn't like me or my ministry. His family don't really like this ministry. And the mom curses me a lot, you know, like crazy stuff. But she doesn't, I don't know her, but apparently she hates me with a passion. And when God told him to go to Atlanta, was it last year? He entered her room and saw that she was watching me a lot. So he was confused. And he told us this. So I was like, this is kind of scary for someone who hates you like this to be watching you. And she loves her son so much, you know, so... Um, recently I had an attack and it was her, his mom so I told him I said I just got an attack and it was your mom's name that was mentioned I said I don't know why God is giving me all these people that their family hate me so much and I get so many attacks from that side that I'm tired I just want to serve God you know I've done so much for you I paid off your car over $20,000 you know I've done so much I've given you so much prayed for you so much but I still get hatred from your family that I'm tired. So in a way that when God released him, I was kind of happy. At least now the mom will leave me alone only for me to have a dream. I think it was two days ago. I had so many dreams. That was my day three of my fast. There was a lot of dreams of deliverance and a lot of dreams that I was having. And one of the dreams I was laying on the couch here and I saw that Darius was laying on the floor, but he was almost attached to the couch. And I was, I was like, what are you doing here? I didn't invite you. Get out. Get out. He said, queen. I said, get out. So I, I chased him out of the house. He went through my back door and he said he came to get juice. 
and then I said, I didn't invite you. Say, should I must I invite him or something? Something. And then when he, he was leaving, he said, You will see, like he was angry, like you will see, he will suffer. I just locked my door and I messaged him. I said, You are free in Jesus' name. I just had a dream. A demon came in your face and I kicked him out. And that's the second time I have kicked out a demon in his face from my house. So now, when that happened, I was like, Father, what is this? What does this all mean? Like, why is that the spirit of loss that attached himself to him that tried to attack me and is using his face? And then I was praying for him, I think two days ago or so. And God, I, I said, Father, you know, I really love him and I, I want you to help him and I need you. And God said, the last time I showed you about one of your workers, and how you got your keys from him and you get you forgave him and you gave him 2000 and he caused you problems few months later he said when i release somebody you have to let them go Belema. otherwise they're gonna curse you problems so i was like okay and then he told me to read about abraham and lot genesis chapter 12 i read till 15 and i even told Darius to read that I said, you know, I'm always trying to intercede for you guys. and But when God is releasing, it's a lot. And God told me that there are battles that he's fighting in his family. And he doesn't want me to deal with it anymore. Like, I have work to do. And he doesn't want those battles to be my battles anymore. Because I've tried my best. You know, but the guy is a good boy. And he's worked so hard here. Yeah, he's made some mistakes, but this is school of power. A lot of my members have made mistakes, and I still keep teaching them, you know. So so even when God told me that, I was still, like, worried for him because that demon that left it, you will see how he will suffer. And I don't want him to suffer. So yesterday, I was talking to um, Alexis Corpe and Temi, and I said, let's pray for Darius, and we prayed for him. And when we prayed for him, I was like, I don't know what God is doing, but I don't want to disobey God. I'm just going to leave him right now. Maybe God is about to do something in his family or something. I don't know. But I just feel for him. So we prayed for him. And then when I finished with them, this was almost 5 a.m. in the morning. I went to go shower. And in the shower, even though God has told me that he has released him, I should leave it alone. In the shower, while I was in the shower, I was I was begging God. I said, God, I can't let him suffer. You know how I love them. Even the one that has left, I still pray for him. I remember even with Marvis, there was one time when we went to homecoming last year, I sent love to message him. And he said, um, woman of God said I should message you that she, she misses you. I said, I didn't tell you I miss him. I just told you to check on him. And he said, woman of God misses you and she wants you back. I said, love, that's not what I told you. We were all laughing. You know, like I still pray for him till today, even though whatever happened, happened. Because I know the enemy is the one that likes to scatter people and do all of that. So in the bathroom this morning at 5 a.m., I was like telling God, I said, Lord, I'm not going to give up on this boy because you, you never give up on us. I don't care what's going on in his family. I don't care if his mom hates me. I don't care. But I'm not going to let this boy suffer. That you, when you bring them to me, it's because you want me to help them. So I, I'm not going to let him suffer. I'm going to help him, even if he can't work for me anymore. I'm not going to give up on him. Lord, please, allow me to help him, please. I'm not giving up on him. You've never given up on me. You've never given up on any of your children. Yeah, you've released him, but I, I would never let him suffer because that demon that used his face, saying, you will see how he will suffer. Almost like they're going to be angry at him because they probably wanted to use use him to get me, but they, they failed. So I said, I'm going to send him $6,000 for two months of pay so that he can at least get settled while he looks for another job, but I'm not... I know the boy has made a lot of mistakes, but I'm not giving up on him. Father, please allow me, allow me, please allow me to help him. Please give me a confirmation. So I came out of the bathroom.
and I went to my Bible. I said, I need a scripture, please. I need a word. I don't want to disobey you and do this, but I don't want to give up on him because you don't give up on us. So I now closed my eyes. I started like looking for a scripture on my Bible app. And I closed my eyes. I started touching different numbers on the on the Bible app. And then once I touch it, I opened my eyes. I saw Numbers 1 verse 21. The King James Version. It said those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were 40 and 6,500. All I wanted was the 6,000 in there. How often do you look for a scripture without even looking and you land where there's 6,000? Man, I just, I was so happy. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I sent him $6,000. And I wrote a note for him. And I even gave him a scripture. And I, I, I was so happy. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Please. I don't want him to suffer. That demon says he will suffer. He will never suffer. Nobody that has come close to me will suffer. Nobody connected to me will suffer. It will never. So I, I, I was so happy. And I sent it to him. And I put a long note in the in the paper. I said, I'm not giving up on you because God never gives up on us. This 6K will help you for two months as God directs your steps. You are a very good man, and I will always love and pray for you, even though you can't work for me again or attend programs for now. Remember, God always has a plan, despite what it may seem like right now. Maintain a low profile and obey God's directions. Stay holy, and God will get you out of this. The enemy said you will suffer, but God will never allow that because he didn't create you to suffer. You are a prince and no devil will be able to destroy you. Don't post this money I'm giving you. Just keep praying and God will see you through this phase of your life and he will fight for you. Jesus loves you very much and no demon can change that. God bless you. So I sent him that and then I sent him Romans 8 verse 31 to 39. I said, um, the King James Version says, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Right? I said, If God be for see, he said, Thank you, Jesus. I had a dream yesterday that God was asking for my paper. I thought it was something wrong with it. So when I saw the blessing, the dream flashed. Thank you, Queen, again. Wow. I didn't even know that. I sent him Romans 3 8, 31 to 39. I said, What shall we say then? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercessions for us? Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I sent him that with the, with the money. He said, wow, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you so much, Queen. I'm lost for word. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for never giving up on me. You have been a huge blessing in my life. Thank you, Queen. I said to God be the glory, pay your bills with that while you look for a job or whatever God wants you to do. God will tell you what next to do. It is well with you. My folks have to give you space for now until God finishes what he's doing with you. Be strong and keep the fire burning. Make sure you spend the money well. I say yes, Queen, thank you. So when I finished, I was so happy. I was so happy and I was telling um, the ladies that this is what I did. I was in the shower interceding for him, talking to God, and God gave me a confirmation scripture that I feel so happy that, you know, like I, I don't care what anyone thinks, but this this is the right thing to do. The demons say you will see how he will suffer. So that means they really want to punish him, and I can't watch him suffer. It's not going to happen. You don't understand? I, it's not going to happen. So I was so happy. I was happy. And when I when I went to sleep, 
instead of me having powerful dreams, I had a whole lot of attacks. I was attacked so badly throughout my whole dreams. And I woke up and I wasn't even sad. You know, I said, well, it is well. The devil, you're a liar. You're not going to make me regret what I've done. God didn't give up on me. I'm not giving up on him. If you like attack me the whole day, it's not going to change anything. I'm happy for what I did. I'm a child of God. Belema means love. I will walk in love. I will keep helping until God says stop. And God hasn't stopped me. So if you like attack me. So I, while I was saying that, I was in the bathroom washing my face. And I saw a vision of me kneeling down, praying to God and by his chair. So I went to his room. I knelt and I prayed. And when I prayed, I told Jesus, I said, Jesus, you know, I just want to serve you. I just want to work for you and love you. I don't know all these things that I've that I that I'm into, all these people that are attacking me, all these people that hate me. How can I come out of this? I just want to do your work. You know, false prophets, this one, even people that watch me, their families. Jesus, how do I come out of this? Help me, please. I just want to do your work. I don't know. I know you told me that they hate you. So because they hated you first, they hate me too. You know, that I should think about all that. But it's, it's a lot. Help me. And then he gave me Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. So I started reading it. And I started personalizing it. Because I didn't want to regret what I did because I was happy with what I did. I said, no, you don't give up on us. You've trained me to do like that. So this is how it's going to be. I don't care if I was attacked. I don't care if the enemy is mad. I know I did the right thing. So Matthew 28 to 30, I read it. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I say, well, I'm coming unto you, Jesus. I need rest right now. I need you to come and help me, to take me out of all these things that the enemy is doing to me. Right? I was just preach, praying and personalizing it. I said, take my yoke. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I started praying with that. And then when I finished, I called my son in and I prayed for my son. We started praying and suddenly this heavy anointing came over me. Like I was talking to Michael at some point and I, I, I couldn't, I, I started speaking this new tongues I couldn't control myself I said come on let's pray let's, let's just pray like it was so heavy and then I heard Jesus Christ tell me go live I said it trying to go live and if you listen to those tongues it's like I was pushed to come online my son said he didn't even know I was live when he opened his eyes he saw me live and that's when he left I didn't even know he left the room until I put my hand like by the side where he was sitting I didn't see him anymore and the word that was spoken in that thing it was saying um, he's with you I'm with you don't be afraid and then he said something about um, that's why when I listened to it I kept listening over I, I felt like that was for me the whole audio was for me and God wanted me to record it so I don't forget but since that time I felt so weak. I felt like I received something heavy and I felt so sleepy. I had to come downstairs. I said, Michael, come and read me um, a Bible story or tell me a Bible story you like. And while I was laying down, we were talking and I said, Aaron, tell me about Aaron. And uh, he said, Aaron, which Aaron? I said, which Aaron do you know? I said, how come people don't really talk about him? the one who accompanied Moses. I said, tell me about him. So he started talking about Aaron and um, he was making some mistakes. I said, no, go to the Bible and read it. Let's hear. I don't know why I picked Aaron. And while my son was reading to me about Aaron, I slept off. And I just started having all these powerful dreams. At first, there was a dream I saw myself in a place where um, people were just eating the food that they didn't even make. And I was crying. I said, why are you guys eating this food that you didn't make? I said, from today, nobody eats this food that they didn't make. Only those who made the food will eat it. Like it's, like, it's like a place where they have done so much bad to me or people. I don't know. And I went there and I cried and I put a new rule. And everybody was quiet. It was like powerful encounters. And then the last one was when I saw... 
I had a new song and it was a hit song and everybody was just wanting the song. They were downstairs, they want, they were happy. And then I was upstairs, like in a big, tall building upstairs. And they were all waiting for me to come because they loved the new song. And then I was coming, like trying to come down, but the room, everywhere I passed, the lights would come on. It's like there was something electrifying in my body. And then when I woke up, God started telling me about my vindication. And then as I'm talking here, he's flashing to me what I did this morning at five, around five something in the morning. And today is day five of my fast. I gave him $6,000. And I said, I'm not giving up on you because God has not given up on us. God never gives up on anyone. Not knowing that that thing really pleased God because the enemy wanted to make the boy suffer. I said, never. No one that comes here will suffer like that. That boy has been going through a lot of battles even before he came to this ministry. It's like all his life. And his life started getting better since he came here, but the enemy still fights him so much. And they fight me too because I'm the one helping him. And God had to release him because the battles were just too much. Even the day I had the dream where I kicked that demon out of the house. He said he's been sick for days. He had a dream that he was fight. his mother came and fought him and we woke up. He's been sick for days. I said, I didn't even know you were sick. So the boy is always like going through so much. Like there's always something happening with him. It's a lot. I've prayed many times for him, but it's just a lot. And God said, when I release somebody, you have to let them go. Otherwise, they'll cause you problems. But just because you're letting somebody go doesn't mean that they're going to suffer. You don't want people to suffer. Like, I don't want to see anyone suffer, especially those that I know love God. Because the suffering thing is the devil. God did not create us to suffer. So I believe God, that was a test that I passed. And God today increased me. Because the way I feel right now, I can't even explain it. And the funny thing is, after I had that dream, and after I did what I did, my whole dream from the time I went to sleep, almost 6 a.m., till when I woke up at 12, it was terrible attacks. Almost like the kingdom of darkness were just... But I woke up, I said, well, it doesn't matter what happened. I did what I did, and I'm happy for what I did. I'm not changing it. I'm happy. Because sometimes, you know, you do something good, and the enemy want to make you feel like you just made the worst mistake. But you know in your heart that that thing you did was good. You know in your heart that you're a child of God and you're supposed to do good always. You're supposed to be perfect like God. God says we should love our enemies. We should bless those who persecute us, who curse us, who despitefully use us. We should pray for them. God says we should overcome evil by doing good. So we have to put these things in practice. Sometimes doing good can cause you some pain. But heaven is applauding you. Heaven is happy. God gives sun and rain to both the good and the bad. People will be like, why is this bad man having so much um, success in his business? Or why is he having sunlight? And this, He's still God's child. God is treating him with love. Hoping that one day he will come back to God. There are many of us, like I was a party promoter for years. I didn't go to church. And I was doing so many parties every weekend. But God didn't give up on me. It was one day I was in the lounge, phase two lounge by myself. At night something in, at, in the night. And I heard a man's voice to my left side saying, what are you doing here? You're not going to succeed here. You're wasting time. This is not why you came. Time is running out. That's God calling me to come. Me, the party promoter. Me that was wasting away in the wall. Me that the wall had condemned me. Saying she, she's making all this our youths come to party all the time. She's going to go to hell. God sent an angel to me in the lounge to tell me that I'm wasting time. I need to come to him. God never gives up on his children. If God had given up on me, 
I wouldn't even be working for him right now. Even the sinners, God still tries to reach them. God sends people to prison to talk to criminals, to talk to people that have killed people. See, God, like, see, God, God, God sends people, there are people who have prison ministries, and their ministry is to go and preach to, to assassins, to murderers, to, because God, even in that prison, God hasn't given up on them. God is hoping that they will make the right decision and, and come to him. Even if they have to kill them in prison, at least let them repent so they don't go to hell. That's the God that I serve. That's why some people, I wonder why they are so proud. Why they are always like running from God when God is always opening his arms wide, ready to accept them. What we need to do is humble ourselves and come before him. If you've sinned, come to God. Look at the lady that gave um, made a video that she 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 committed um, fornication and got pregnant. It was God who came in her dream and told her to make that video because he wanted to deliver her, restore her. He wanted to bless her. The enemy wanted to kill her, wanted to make her suffer. She tried to kill herself several times. It didn't work. But the God that I serve came. He said, you have to tell everyone. That's the way to overcome the enemy. Go and tell people what you have done. So that spirit of shame that is making you hide can go. And that was her deliverance. And she obeyed. She humbled herself. She did that. She posted it on her page. She still sent it to me because I didn't see it when she posted it. I didn't send her to do anything. And just yesterday, God blessed her with $1,000. I heard God say that somebody was going to be led to give her $500. And he will give them a mighty deliverance. And she said two people gave her $500, Alexis and Howard. And I know my God will honor it. Just because she humbled herself, she did what he asked her to do. He didn't condemn her. Oh, you're no longer my child because you got pregnant without marriage. He told her to do the right thing and she did. So this God that I know, he never gives up on anyone. It does not matter what you've done. Go to him and he will forgive you. He will deliver you. He will restore you. God is the only one who has the power to, to deliver to save, to heal, to restore. So if you're running from God, where are you going to go? The devil, look at him saying he will suffer. If the devil comes to steal, kill, destroy, comes to make people suffer, come to scatter, come to... That's why we need to stop sinning. When you keep doing these sinful things, you give him power to do whatever he wants with you. You give him power to destroy the good work that God is doing in your life. When, when, when you touch his stuff, you would think you're enjoying yourself, but it's only leading to destruction. But even in that destruction part, if you listen to the voice of God and you come back to God, God can still turn everything around. And before you know, the same God that you were running from will lift you up, will bless you will take you out of that peak, that cage. The devil wants to destroy God's children. But God's not going to allow that. God sent people to me. For me to teach them his ways. Every day I come online, try my best to teach them. Some of them, they get it. Some of them don't get it. I can't force anybody. But I've seen a lot of people's life change. I've seen a lot of people like change a lot of people have changed a lot of people have changed i've seen how i know how many of you were when you first started because you guys messaged me a lot and i've seen your life change i've seen you love god i've seen people get anointed by god i've seen people have ministries i've seen people get married i've seen people get better i've seen lives change those who truly love god they know that this is a woman of God. They know that God is here. Those who are coming just for healing and deliverance that don't want to know God, they don't last here. They just go and they get what they came for or they start talking nonsense. But there are those who really want to know God, who want to 
live for God, who love God, and have seen their lives change. Seen their lives change. Seen their lives change. I've seen how God has changed Lazarus' life from when he started watching me and now. All of you have seen it. It's improved. But there's just some things that are fighting him. Foundational, generational. He's done so many fast things. And, and I keep wondering. I'm like, Father, what is going on? But even with that, I can't give up on him like that. Because God has not given up on me. So I believe that this was something that really shook heaven. And this is why God showed me this dream where I'll be walking past and the light bulbs are coming on. He told me he's giving me more, more power. So when you do something good, don't worry about the attacks that come from it. God's going to reward you. Don't worry about the people that will say negative stuff. God's going to give you a reward. God's reward is better than whatever man can do to you. You don't know what that reward could be. It could be life. It could be long life. It could be anointing. It could be something. But I know this is an anointing because the way I'm feeling, I'm actually vibrating like, like, like it's a lot, like, like power or something just happened. So I have to share this with you guys. Because I believe this was a big trigger. So to God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And now he's telling me about my vindication. It's like something is happening in the spirit realm. And people will believe my vindication. People will be looking for my vindication book. I believe what they were looking for downstairs or what they liked was my vindication song or my vindication book because a lot of people were liking it. And you know, God gave me a vindication song, not just one. There was one he gave me. I saw angels. I heard angels come into my room singing. We are here for vindication. But there was another one too that he gave me two years ago. I took a, a little nap, like less than one minute. And I started here, vindicate me, O oh Lord, vindicate. And I recorded at the papa party katatele papa party ete ya papa. He said it's that song, that one, that one. He said that's the song, that's the song that they were all excited for in the dream. That one. He said it's that one. It's that song. That one. Yeah, because they were all happy. They loved this. They liked the song, and I was I was upstairs, and I. Upstairs in a dream is elevation, like I was trying to come down to meet them. He said, it's that song, it's that song. Vindicate me, O oh Lord, vindicate me, O oh Lord. Vindication. And I woke up to two testimonies about vindication. One with her baby. She got a baby. God gave her a baby. Even though they say she couldn't have a child from vindication. But the other one says she was having pain in her stomach. And she used the vindication book and the the book was pulling out, like it was like pulling out the pain, like the way she said her own. Let me see. I'll show her own video. This was all from today. I am so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for me. I am so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you have done for me. I am so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you have done for me. I am so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you have done for me. Good afternoon to you, Apostle. Good afternoon to you, SOP members. My name is Sienna McDonald, and I'm here to testify to the goodness of God. I want to thank God today for life. I want to thank God for Apostle. I want to thank God for using her for his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Last night, I was listening to Apostle, and I was in the chair 
all the time nothing was going wrong with me and all of a sudden this pain comes from nowhere it's the time of the month for me and i was like this pain was so much that i begin to cry that i tell myself i'm not gonna move from this chair i'm gonna continue listening to apostle till she ends the video but the pain was more than me so i decided to go into the bedroom and i decided to leave the door open where i could be able to hear her from inside and then i heard the part where the apostle say that the book is very special when you take the book and you believe and you place it wherever you might feel in pain the pain goes away only if you believe and then i remember that i used to use this book so many times miracle happened to me through this book and i haven't testified but today i'm here to testify to the goodness of god so i went and i read i reached for the book and i took the book and i put it on the right side where the pain was coming from and i begin to feel this pain pulling like the book was drawing this pain and i start to say before that i heard the enemy was saying there's only one way to end this pain and I rebuke Satan's voice and I said, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And then I heard apostles talk about the book. And I took this book and I placed it there. And this pain was pulling. This book was drying this pain. And I began to praise God. And I was yarning and I yarned and I yarned for eight times. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, go into the washroom. And when I went there, I did number two. I walk out back of that washroom like nothing had ever happened to me so i just want to say to you continue to believe in the woman that god is using to help us i want to say apostle may god continue to give you the strength to push and go through i know sometimes it's not easy because sometimes i ask myself how you do it but i want to say continue to obey God because he knows what he's doing you have a heart of gold pure I want to thank God for using you the way he's using you I want to thank God for using you so that changes could come into my life. I could understand your his word more because the way how you preach and you explain everything. I want to thank God for your patience with us. I want to thank God for your kindness that you have been doing, everything that you have been doing through God who have given you the strength, the health, the finance to do the wonderful things that you have been doing throughout the years. I want to thank God for those who faithfully be by your side supporting God ministry. Apostle, thank you for all that you have been doing. Thank you for hearing from God. Thank you for believing in him. Thank you that God has blent everything that the enemy has meant for evil and he has turned it around for good in your life. Thank you for answering the call of God upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God for blessing you. I thank God for blessing your family, even to your son in the mighty name of Jesus. May God continue to keep you in your going out and your coming in and each and every one of you that is listening to this audio in the mighty name of Jesus. God is good. God is great. Oh, and I just came in from church and I heard Apostle saying that she was speaking in tongue and I heard the part when she was saying that um, sometimes that thoughts, that suicidal thoughts and I said to myself when I came in from church just now, that was me last night, Lord. Look how you, look how you're speaking again today to me. I want to say thank you. You're truly, truly a woman of God. And I want to say thank you for the person who have blessed me with this book again. And because of this book, my pain had stopped last night. Because of God who have given a apostle the, the wisdom and the understanding to do this book. I am ill in the mighty name of Jesus. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. So I saw that message when I woke up with the one with the lady that had a baby and God says I need to come online and talk about the vindication because everything he said will happen with the vindication is what's going to happen. I saw somebody's comments saying that they've been trying to get the book. There was a time we were, people were even buying books for people who still doesn't have the vindication book. 
if you if you don't have a vindication book and you're a member here type i don't have one how many of you have extra that you can send to somebody because some of you still have a whole lot right um some of you bought like um some of you bought a lot of book right you don't, you need to if you don't have one at all and somebody has extra can you send them we have a few left here we haven't published or printed any new ones so we have people that don't have okay okay root has extra Ruth, how many extra do you have if you have a lot extra it's good to mail out to somebody see if, see somebody has three Velma says she, she can help someone with one. Okay, good. All right. Okay. Ida has one to send to someone in America. Ruth is in Europe. If you're in Europe, because right now we're not selling it online. Only when I come to program, like the Easter program, we're going to have some for those that want. Because the false prophet had been fighting it in court. That he about the book so that's why we stopped selling it online for now he wanted to destroy the book because the book is exposing him but god is not letting it happen okay let me see um okay let's see we got some people that don't have all right those of you that have okay ruth has seven seven extra all right, you guys can message each other and help give. I'm just putting your comments. All right. Oh, let's see. All right, good, good. All right. And if you want more, when I when I come to the programs, I've not. I don't think we took it to. Did we take it to Florida? And, I say Florida, Connecticut, and Philadelphia. I don't think so. But in Columbus here next weekend, we'll have it. So if you need some, um, you can always get it from the programs. God is good. Something's going on. You know, something's going on. Something is going on. Something big. Whenever I see things in the spirit, it's going to happen soon in the physical. But what I saw today, it was a lot of people. This Now that God said this is a song, let me play this song. I'm going to play three times. I don't even know why the number three came to me. That's the latest um, vindication song that he taught me in my dream. So I believe this song is about to be a hit song soon. Vindicate you just like he vindicated me. <laughs> 
Please. 
God said this is a song that everybody was dancing to in my dream because I didn't get to hear the song, but it was a song that, wow. No wonder I woke up and these two videos were waiting for me for vindication testimony. Wow. God is up to something. Wow. There's victory. God is up to something. God is up to something. Wow. There's victory already. God, and when God vindicates you, it means the truth comes out about you. The truth is being spoken about you. People get to see who you really are, get to know who you really are, and all the lies that people have told about you. I exposed all the people that did stuff to you are punished. So there are many of you here. God is saying this is our season of vindication. This is your season of vindication. Something is about to happen. You're about to get what belongs to you. You're about to be announced. You know what is so um, um, strange? In um, Connecticut, the Uber driver that drove us, I paid him a hundred dollars and 
I tipped him a hundred dollars. That's the first Uber driver that has told me, can I get a picture with you? Alexis, I don't know if you sent me that picture. Send me that picture you took me with the Uber driver. I said, can I get a picture with you? Who knows? Maybe I'll see you on the news soon or TV soon or something. And his name is Christian. I was like, <laughs> I had this thing at <laughs> Is it, is it, maybe I'll see you on the news soon, on TV soon. And you know, the dream I had where I had that deliverance a few days ago, the Uber driver, it just kept reminding me of the Connecticut. It's like the Connecticut trip is linked to it. And I was wondering why the man said if he would soon see me on TV or news. He was laughing. He requested to take a picture with me. His name is Christian. We try to get another Uber because I, I like a certain kind of car when I'm riding Uber. But then he's the only one that kept popping up. I said, okay, you know what? Just let him come. So I told him to take me to where I went for my vacation. I went there and I went to pray on that place. And I went to, you know, pray because I even forgot that I went there. And then the same Uber driver took me back to the airport. And it was going to be, so that dream I had was similar to that. It's like that prayer there was connected to something. But now I'm just remembering what he said. He said, can I take a picture with you? Who knows? I'll soon see you on the on TV or on news. It, 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 his name was Christian. Me and Alexis were shocked. And she he used his phone to take. And then this is the one she took with her phone. But he used he had used his own phone to take too. He wanted it on his phone. So maybe I'll see you on the news soon or on TV soon. This was just this is from Connecticut. This is in front of the airport. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, no problem. So after taking with his phone, Alexis used her phone to take this one. And this was just on Monday. You know, I just went to Connecticut on Sunday. That Connecticut program was so powerful. The messages were just on point. And even the way God honored Barbara, I woke up today and she had sent um, a testimony um, video. And God said that this is how he will honor those who stand for me, who fight for me, who, and this ministry. Because some people keep quiet when people are trying to destroy this place and they've benefited so much from here, but they don't even say anything. They just sit down and let people talk nonsense about us. They even join and say stuff and they know it's not true. Well, Barbara stood her ground to the point that Barbara had to leave the job and she couldn't get another job since last year, was it August or September? But God saw all of that. And when she came, he honored her. And he gave her $10,000. She and her husband, they did a testimony video. Let me show it. All hail the queen. Good evening, my queen, Apostle Bella Mabili. Good evening, School of Power members. I am here to give a big testimony of what the Lord has done for me in Connecticut. All because I have stood up for my queen and her ministry from what you may call the bullies that are out there. And we're going to march forward from no one to say anything about this ministry, no matter what, because we are going to be out there and we are going to do it in love. Like my queen always said, Say it in love. So I come this afternoon to give my big testimony of what the Lord has done for me in Connecticut on Sunday. He has blessed me with $10,000. And I so appreciate, I am so grateful because he has remembered me. He has remembered me. And so Glenn and I are going to... Um, use the funds that God has given us 
to our ministry to help other people because we're gonna um duplicate what apostle does to help the the sick and to help the homeless and to help the widows so yes thank you so much apostle uh, thank you so much for trusting us and thank you so much for blessing my wife uh, the blessing you've given, we're going to take it and we're going to turn it into a blessing for as many others as we can. Thank you so much. We appreciate your love for the Lord and your love for Barbara and me. Thank you. We love you, Queen. We love you so much. Bye-bye. Mm. That was a powerful video. She says she told Jesus to help her, to say the right words. And it's like Jesus himself did it. The woman stood her ground for her ministry, her woman of God, her God. And she suffered for some months, no job. But thank God her husband, you know, was able to pay all the bills. But she, she, she stood her ground and God saw it. And God rewarded her because this is what we need. The devil has been trying to destroy this place, but a lot of people have benefited from this place. So many lies have been told about us. But those of you that are still here, you know that, you know what you know. You know what God told you. God showed you. You know what you benefit. Today alone, I've come twice online. The first one, I was praying in tongue, bringing you to Christ, helping you. I'm back again, making you dance, making you, like, come on now. This is a great place. It's not a Sunday, Sunday church. It's a daily place, <laughs> long hours. And now in two days, we're going to, or three days, today is what, Saturday. On Tuesday, we start our fasting. And then that same weekend, we, we have Easter weekend program. We always have something. There's always something going on in School of Power. So as you're doing your job, you're doing whatever, you still have, it's like, a, it's like your own TV show, your channel. Most of you don't even have cable. This is your cable. So don't let the enemy take this away from you. I want to show the part in the program, or just a few minutes of it, when she was when she received the money and other parts. Because Jesus is ready to be the middleman right there to get you back on track. Don't you guys see it? Somebody clap for you. You are restored. Amen. And you stood for this ministry. Yes. Yes. Even behind my back. Yes. You would not sit down and have somebody no. talk nonsense. No. And the enemy wanted to punish you for it. Yes. So okay, we'll see. You won't get a job again. But now when you go apply, you will get a job. <laughs> Some people will sit down and they'll just let people curse my God, cuss me out. Every day they just take it. God is looking at you to see what you're going to do. There are some people you don't come and curse their God, some religions. Yeah, even Muslims. Yeah. <laughs> Go and stand before them and be cursing their God. I ain't Whatever happened to you, now you do it. But we Christians, God will bless you with $10,000. <laughs> Instead of the lady to go give a testimony, 
She was insulted. Go ahead, tell, tell us some of the things she was saying. Actually, when we came into the room, I told her to leave, but she didn't want to leave. And she goes, how did I apostle? Why is she getting all these people that are all sleeping all over the floor? And why she doesn't have any any kind of like um, thing for them, for them to do all of that. I said, no, I said, you're wrong. And to be honest with you, Apostle, that when she said that, it's like I wanted to dump her out of the roadway. And well, this is a woman, a woman of God that prayed for her. Yes. She got healed. Yes. And, when he and she was shocked. But she still had the guts to be talking like, yeah. why, why all these people here with me? Why are they listening to me? Yeah. Why are they? Can you believe, all of you, can you believe the same lady that was healed? I gave her a, a, a nice time, right? Yes, you did. Talk to her, almost 15 minutes. More. Yeah. She couldn't feel whatever instantly was like, Jesus touched her instantly. And she's saying this to my member, even right in the program or after? After when we got upstairs. When, they went, when you guys were driving back? No, in the room. In the, the hotel room. In the hotel room. Wow. Of the same hall. How do you expect her to do? And she goes back to work and is the same woman at the bus. Actually, she fired me the same night, the Sunday night. And I said, you can fire me. And I emailed her boss. And she said, nobody can fire you, you gotta come back. So when I came back, she was like doing, she was still doing everything. everything. And you had to leave? I had to, she, yeah. I had to leave. She was doing everything to disconnect me from my job, from her, because I was reporting to her. She didn't like that you were part of our ministry. I don't think so, because even when but I was, she wanted to come to the program. She always wanted to come, but there's something just turn her around. And she got healed. And she got healed. But she still... She's still bad, yeah. But I didn't let it go. I can't, I told her, I said, that's it. I said, you can't talk to my apostle like that. I said, it's God you're talking to. I said, I ain't go for you to make that video, that that, that um, video that she got healed. She wouldn't want, she didn't want to do she it. She didn't want to testify. She didn't want to testify. And she'd been suffering that for a while. I don't know she was, I didn't know until that night. I didn't know. Yeah, she was even crying. I think. Yeah. <sighs> and she has suffered since she made that move to leave. Yes. No job. But no now job. you're going to get a job. Amen! Thank you, Jesus. Not only that, you're getting 10000 in your bank account. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When you do the right thing, heaven will surprise you. She's suffering for her ground that she stood. For the place that God placed her. You guys heard her husband talk of how he's made her house so comfortable for her. With speakers everywhere so she can hear. You remember the program? They kind of constructed things in the house to accommodate her to the messages. And the enemy is like, okay, I'm going to get her out of here. What do you guys hear? If she was allowing that lady keep speaking this evil into her ears and she didn't do nothing, one day she will start to think like the woman. Right? No, I'm just saying. She will begin to consider these things. She will begin to have dreams, manipulated dreams. Maybe the devil will try to make me look bad or something. But she knows I'm not. But that lady is just an agent that wanted to be used. I'm so proud of you, sweetie. Oh, thank you. You remember your paper, email, and type it. It's Barbara. No, no, just type it. So that we can send it right now. You know me, I don't promise stuff and I don't. I do it right away. Because it's God honoring her. And this is for learning to take school of power. This is where I say the enemy is always trying to get you guys, to scatter you guys. So we don't have anyone here. <laughs> But you know what you're gaining from here. You know what you're learning from here. Not only learning. Okay. Yeah, you. Let me send it down so I don't forget. I was so 
so happy when you said you were coming. Well, that's it. That's it, right? Yeah. All right. I'm so proud of you, sweetie. What did you say? So, um, when when I texted Apostle, Apostle didn't reply back to me, and Evita was looking at the messenger, like you know, oh Apostle, are you gonna text me? I mean, I'm just waiting, like I'm waiting for my mom to say something, and she didn't. And I said maybe she didn't see the message. Maybe I should do it again. I said no, 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 no. Let me wait. But you know when you when you hear Apostle say she's coming to a city, that zeal. That you can't wait, you're so happy, and you can't wait to get to wait for that day to come and get packed up and everything. But I was not happy. I didn't. I I I was like, Apostle didn't text me, and I don't know if I'm gonna be coming because I'm having all of this, you know, going on. But when she texted me, like that big smile came back to my face, and I said, My mother has has talked to me now. I am good. I'm good, and um, and I couldn't wait to get here to see you, Queen. I couldn't wait to get here to see you, and also all of all of our members here. All of our members. members. Yes. 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 No, no, all of our members here. Look at it. She has. I have sent it to her, and it says, "Blessing from God for what passing your." Yes. Somebody clap for Jesus. Yes. 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 There are people that suffer for the sake of Christ, suffer for good reasons, and God rewards them. Not suffering for the wrong reasons. Look at that. Look at that. Look, oh my God. This is a good anniversary gift. But we are fasting. Who is I in this chocolate? Wow. He did it. God, you did it yourself. I did a puzzle. Wait, you put a pin on. You put all this candy. Yes. So you that have not worked since August or September. September. You still spend money. Your husband money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to come to those places with with something not empty handed, and she doesn't have a job, and she took her time. Wow. This is beautiful. I've never seen this kind. Who gave me this idea? Have you guys seen it before? Candy with instead of um, fruits. Correct. Okay, and I know that you like Snickers. Yeah, but not this much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> not this much. <laughs> well, you guys will share with me, right? Yeah. Father, bless your daughter for this. And she does it. See now, you see the heart of her is like a child. Like Barbara is someone that you have the, all of you have your own different style, characters, and I have to understand you guys and work with you guys. And she's gone through a lot. She's learned a lot. I've corrected her a lot, taught her many things. She's older than me, but she came here to be humble and learn and grow. And God has blessed her today with ten thousand dollars, and she's gonna get a good job. Amen. One day she will love. Amen. She's she back, and from there she can even pay to come to any program. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love this. Where are we gonna put this? Let's not put it in front because we're fasting. <laughs> we can put it close to where the keyboard is. Come on, come take it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you were happy to see that? $10,000 and God rewarded her. And now people that she's getting um, emails for jobs. God is amazing. We all have to go through a test somehow. And we need to pass our test. Some of this test will cause suffering. But you just do the right thing. When I was talking, talking about 
suffering for good reasons. The scripture came to me. Let's read First Peter chapter three, verse seventeen. It says, "It is better remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong." It is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. I'm going to read this 1 Peter chapter 3. I want all of you to read it, but let me read from verse 8, because I really love it. I see that I I highlighted a lot of it. It says, finally, all of you should be of one mind sympathize with each other love each other as brothers and sisters be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude don't repay evil for good that don't rep- don't repay evil for evil don't retaliate with insult when people insult you instead pay them back with a blessing i think i was preaching this a few days ago right but that was matthew right i think matthew chapter 5 um, they said, instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessings. For the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and see many days, many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Wow. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Verse 13. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. Are you listening? He said, if you suffer for doing what is right... God will reward you for it. And this is what God just did. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. I don't know, I just feel this heavy anointing on me. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. Verse 18, this is 1 Peter chapter 3. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical debt, but he was raised to life in the spirit. Whenever we think of suffering or when we're encountering or when we're suffering, we need to think about Jesus Christ. That's why I read about him a lot. It really encourages me, strengthens me. He suffered so much. A lot. One time the Holy Spirit told me that the movies that they show about Jesus, that what we see in the movie, how they flogged him, they nailed him to the cross, all of the bad treatment, it said it's nothing compared to what really happened. That he went through way more than they show in the movie, like in the movies. It felt more pain than what we watch and we're crying when we watch those movies. How many of you sometimes can't watch it? (laughs) Sometimes you watch it and you cry again like that's your first time watching it. How one man suffered. Innocent man that didn't do anything bad. Suffered so much just because he wanted to obey God for for me and you to, to be saved. So when we watch this, when we read this, It helps us to go through our own period of suffering, persecution, hardship, knowing that Christ went through it too. But it all turned out 
for good eventually. And me and you are benefiting from it. Do you understand? So he should be our example. And that's why you need to study your Bible more. And you'll be encouraged by it. It will help you carry on. Christ suffered for our sins. Verse 18, right? Once for all time. He never sinned. You know, he never sinned. I, I can't say I never sinned. You can't say that. But for someone who never sinned, went through such suffering. How about me and you? <laughs> just think about what I just said. Jesus Christ had no sin. Bible says he never sinned. Yet he went through so much suffering. How about you and I? <laughs> we are sinners. <laughs> so if someone who had no sin could suffer like that, like he didn't do anyone wrong. All he was doing was going around doing good. But he suffered so much. Talk less of me and you. We we can't say we've never seen. We can't say we are perfect. Please, we are far from it. So if, if the enemy is doing these things to us, we should remember Jesus and his sufferings. And we should remember where he is now. And what that suffering brought about. The good that came out of it. And it will help us to be able to carry on in time of suffering. Knowing that something good is going to come out of it. And that's why we're even talking about vindication right now. Vindication is God coming to tell your story. Coming to show that you are innocent. Coming to um, elevate you and exposed all the enemies or it's a time that people will know that truly you you are not really as bad as they claim or you're not the one that did what they say you did that you're actually innocent you're good and this is after so much suffering and god vindicates you and now elevation comes jesus was vindicated by god that's why they couldn't find him in the tomb that's why he's seated in heaven beside god that's why we are able to use his name to pray that's why we are able to have encounters with him this is his vindication so you that is suffering right now god's gonna vindicate you like this video we watched that was barbara's vindication the enemy tried to frustrate her she couldn't get a job i'm sure there there would, there would be voices saying you see you stood your ground for this woman and the ministry and now you can't even work nobody wants to hire you just like all of these voices will be coming into your head making you feel like you should have not stood your ground but god vindicated her a few days ago And today I posted something. I said, stop believing the lies of the enemy and hold on to the promises of God over your life. Because God was telling me of people that the enemy is always speaking to them, lying to them, all these voices in their head. And if you're that person, stop believing the lies of the enemy. All those negative voices speaking against the will of God for you, putting curses in your head, telling you you can't when God says you can Stop believing the lies of the enemy. Stop listening to those voices. And hold on to the promises of God. What does God promise you, somebody? I need you to type it. What has God promised you recently? What has he spoken over your life recently? What has he told you? What did you see in your dream? What did he tell you when you were praying? What word did he give you? He says, hold on to those promises. God has great plans for you. You are the light of the world. Go and shine. And I put two scriptures on here. Jeremiah 29, 11, the New Living Translation. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. And then I put Matthew 5, 14, the King James Version. Ye are the light of the world. Yes, you, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
the word of God helps us to overcome all those evil voices. Helps us to overcome times of suffering. But the enemy attacks and people don't like to read the Bible. But there's so much peace in reading the Bible. Deliverance and healing. All of that you can find it there. So Father, strengthen your children to study the word in the name of Jesus. See? Some of you are remembering what God spoke to you. God promised marriage. God says stay focused. He's giving you peace. God says he will make you great. These are the things you have to hold on to. It doesn't matter what is happening around you because the enemy is going to shake things around you. Do you understand? And everything around you will be looking opposite <laughs> of what God said to you. God said, don't worry, just hold on to what he has spoken over you. Yeah. And you will see. I like to use Joseph as an example. Joseph had dreams, good dreams. But guess what? In real life, <laughs> it didn't look like it. <laughs> All he was experiencing was uh, wickedness and suffering and lies and jail. And it was bad. It was nothing like the dreams that he had. But God's word still came to pass over his life. That's one story that I always want to read when things are beginning to, to look a certain way. Because Joseph had nobody coming to see him at that prison that they put him. But God was with him. The Bible says God was with him. So even you listening to me right now, God is with you. God is with you. Somebody say this. God is with me. That thing you're dealing with right now, God says I should tell you that he is with you. It may seem like you are alone, but you are never alone. <laughs> God is with you. Yes, the God who created you is with you. The enemy cannot create anyone. He didn't create you, so don't worry about what he's saying over you. God is with you. Yes, even right now, God is with you. In fact, all of you, I need you to do something. You know, like, I like to test these things. Just close your eyes and just ask God. This is how you say it. God, are you with me? That's it. Close your eyes and just say that. God, are you with me? And keep quiet. Some of you will feel this heat come over you. A breeze, a cool breeze. Some of you will feel cold. Some of you will begin to shiver. Some of you will want to cry. Some of you will start remembering things that he said. Some of you remember dreams. Some of you will feel like you just got a hug. Some of you will feel like you need to speak in tongues. God, are you with me? That's it. <laughs> Tell us how you how you feel after that. I'm telling some of you will even hear audibly, he will say yes. He will say yes. Some of you will hear a scripture. Like clearly, God, are you with me? If God is with you, no one can be against you. I'm telling you right now, try this. God is always with you. In good times, in bad times. God is always with you. In that place where you feel like you have no friends, no family, God is there. And use Joseph as an example. He was locked up in prison. His father didn't know where he was. His brother had sold him off into slavery. Potiphar's wife had accused him of rape. He had no friends in Egypt. But God was with him. God was with him. God was with him. And that's all that mattered. And the plan that God had for his life came to pass. Without the help of anyone, God made it happen himself at the right time. You don't need a crowd of people around you for you to feel safe. 
or for you to feel like your destiny will be great. All you need is God. If God is with you, that's all you need. And Joseph is an example. God was with him all the way. And no one could kill him. God kept him. No family, no friends. But God took him to the palace at the right time. God is going to take you to that palace, to that promised land, to that place that he promised you. And he doesn't need help from anyone. Do you understand? God is with you. So let me finish reading 1 Peter 3 from verse, I stopped at 18. Christ suffered for our sins once and for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. Physically, you may be suffering, but in the spirit, you are not suffering. Hey, patele, brother, yata. <laughs> Physically, you may look like you are nobody, but in the spirit, you are somebody. <laughs> in the eyes of people, you are nobody. But in the eyes of God in heaven, you are somebody great. Hey, did somebody hear this? <laughs> right now, the world, they may be calling you names. But in heaven, God is saying, she is my chosen one. <laughs> he is my chosen one. She is my queen. He is my prince. She is my princess. But physically, they are calling you demon. They are calling you names. They are saying you are this and that. But that's not what God is saying in heaven. So no matter what anyone is calling you right now, it doesn't really matter. What is God calling you right now? In fact, all of you, ask God again. Say, Lord, what are you calling me right now? Oh, you're going to hear a name. Oh, God, you're going to hear a name. Come on now. I'm putting, I'm putting you into work today. God, what are you calling me right now? Oh, you're going to hear names now. You're even going to hear scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> what God is calling you is what matters. Not what the enemy has made people call you. They don't really know you, but God knows you inside out. <laughs> That's all that matters. So physically right now, they may call you demon, marine spirit, agent, wicked, witch, whatever. But what is God calling you right now? Who do people say I am. That's what Jesus was asking. What are people saying? And who do you say I am? And God told him, you, you are the son of God. Mm-hmm. That's right. See, look at that. My precious daughter. That's right. And that's all that matters. My daughter, you are a child of God beautiful strong warrior my chosen one look at that my princess look at that look at that and that's all you need right now look at that you see you're hearing from god uh-huh that's all you should hold on to don't worry about what the enemy is calling you he's just a thief he wants to steal you from god and he can't so he's pissed off that's right. That's right. Hold on to this. You're God's princess. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter if you're in prison right now. Doesn't matter where you are. Hold on to this. You heard it yourself, right? And he's probably going to come in your dream and even tell you more. <laughs> you know, most times when I do something here, people get the seat in the dreams. It happens. Like I was praying for you guys and your children I think about um, God delivering people from the spirit of homosexuality and also with the wave that I was talking one of my members slept and God came in my face and waved her kids let me show you that video so what I do here it's going to happen when you go to sleep if you believe let's watch this greetings queen and QBM family this is Paula Johnson I have a testimony 
So yesterday, Friday, I was at work when Apostle was on. So I was listening, but you know, I'm working so I can get to hear everything, you know, properly. So when I came home last night, I put it on to TV, YouTube before I went to sleep. So I'm hearing on and off. I wake up, I hear a little, go to sleep, wake up, hearing a little. I woke up at one point when Apostle was saying that um, she's going to pray for all the, the children against homosexualism. So she said, if your kids are not with you, you can, you know, put your hand on your forehead and tap for them. So I remember I put my hand on my forehead and say, I'm tapping for my children and I call their names. And shortly after that, I went back to sleep again. So before day this morning, I had this dream that a pastor came into my living room with me and my kids in here. And she, you know, prayed for them and did the wave. And it's like both my children, they, you know, their head went back like, you know, when someone is manifesting. And, you know, so I think they got delivered. I know they got delivered because after that, Apostle said, let me give you one more wave. And then she said to my daughter, um, my daughter needs another wave. But I can't remember if she had given my daughter this, the second wave. But I know the first wave that she gave, they were like put their head back like, you know, someone manifesting. But I'm not sure if she got the second wave. But I just, you know, believe God and I trust God that they were delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Apostle. I know this, this ministry is on another level. There is no ministry like our ministry. Thank you, Jesus, for always saving us, always saving our children. Thank you, Apostle, for always encouraging us, coming on daily to do the videos for us. I would just appreciate you, Queen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So God came in her dream and waved at her kids. The wave that you see me do. And she saw their deliverance. And this from was from yesterday's audio. I did pray for your kids. And I told you guys, if they're not, they're top for them. So whatever I do here, some of you go to sleep and you see it. Because it's God doing it through me. So whatever God has called you today, hold on tight to that. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. You are God's child. You are God's chosen. You are God's anointed. You are God's princess, God's queen, God's prince, God's prophetess, God's prophet. That's right. There's a song, I am what I am who God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. I am what God says I am. You guys know that song? I am what God says I am. Somebody sing it. I am what God says I am. Sing it wherever you are. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. I am what God says I am. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. I am who God says I am. I am what God says I am. Melema is what God says she is. Oh, she is a winner. She's not a loser. She's what God says she is. You are what God says you are. Oh. You are who God says you are. You are winners. You are not losers. You are who God says you are. You know, sometimes all you need to do is just worship. Just worship, just praise. 
Just get on your knees and just sing one or two songs before you know you start speaking in tongues. Before you know God is speaking through your own mouth, <laughs> words that are coming out of your mouth, I will fight for you. I will help you. You would think it's you saying these things. <laughs> it's not even you. <laughs> it's God speaking these words from your mouth. I will help you. I will come. You know, all these things. And when you finish, you just feel this peace that will come over you. You feel so weak. You feel so light. It's better than the way you were feeling before you pray. So all of you, start praying. Start singing. Start worshiping. Start believing. And stop crying, feeling depressed. One minute you're happy. The next minute you're sad. And before you know, you're forgetting all the good things that God has said to you. Stay in God's presence. That's all I can say. Me, this is how I roll. I always look up to God like God is my my everything, my all, my my best friend, my father, everything. If something is bothering me, I just talk to him about it. And this day when I when I tell God something, it's like instantly he takes care of it for me. It's so quick, it's like heaven is just waiting for me to open my mouth. The response rate is so fast, like, boom. <laughs> I've been noticing it for days. I'm like, something's going on. Like, Belema is calling. Belema is saying something. Let me listen to Belema now. Okay, all right. Give Belema what she wants. Boom. And that's how it is with all of you. Try it and see. You will testify. So let me finish this First Peter chapter 3. The Christ suffered for our sins once for all time he never sinned but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to god he suffered physical death but he was raised to life in the spirit so he went and preached to the spirits in prison those who disobeyed god long ago when god waited patiently while noah was building his boat only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood and that water is a picture of baptism which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God. And all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. So you see that suffering that he suffered. Now he has gone to heaven and he's seated in the place of honor next to God right and that's how you with every suffering that you've suffered god is coming to vindicate you god is coming to elevate you god is coming to announce you your suffering for christ was not in vain you are blessed god wants me to play that song again vindicate me oh lord i think today is all about that song so i'm gonna play it again for three more times again and let's dance because something has happened it's not something is about to happen. Something has already happened. And you are about to testify. Hallelujah. Vindicate you just like he vindicated. 
I'm 
you like that song so God says something is about or something is happening already and it's vindication season so get ready I don't know what's going on but I know something is happening to God be the glory so while I was listening to the song I was talking to God and I remembered today what had um, what happened when I was um, fellowshipping with my son in God's room, while I was, we were, we were talking about something. I think he was, he was explaining the scripture that I gave him to read, Matthew eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And suddenly, I just told him, I said, "Wait." I said, "Father." Um, my 2020 vision dream that you showed me. Remember the dream that you showed me, Lord. I want it to happen now. I want it to come to pass soon. I want, I, I'm ready for it. Yes, the 2020 vision that you showed me. I'm ready for it, Lord. Give it to me in Jesus' name. You know, I was just, like, I was just talking to my son. And suddenly it seemed like, I just remember the dream. And I was telling God the dream. He showed it to me. <laughs> I don't even know how, what made me stop my son to just say that prayer. 
So while this song was playing, God reminded me of that moment. And God took me to a scripture. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. The King James Version says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters as washed. Let me read that in the NLT version. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing, and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth after 150 days. So now God was the one who told Noah to go into the ark with his family and all those animals that came to him. But why is this scripture saying God remembered Noah? Let's go to Genesis chapter 7, right? From verse um, 17 says, For 40 days the flood waters grew deeper, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely on the surface. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountains on the earth rising more than 22 feet above the highest peaks. All the living things on earth died. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people. Everything that breathed and lived on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth. People, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and the birds of the sky, all were destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat. Now the verse 24 says, And the flood waters covered the earth for 150 days. It seemed like something that was not going to end. 150 days. It just kept going and going. But chapter 8 verse 1 says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat, he sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood waters began to recede, meaning the waters started going down. So while my son and I we were talking, I suddenly remembered my 2020 vision dream that God showed me, and I reminded God of the dream that He showed me, and I prayed and I said, Father, remember the 2020 vision dream that you showed me, I'm ready for it. I want it now. Give it to me in Jesus' name. You know, so now this is why God brought this up. God wants you to remind him of something, something that he's told you, something that he promised you. Not like he forgot because he never forgets, but it's good for you to remind him. Father, remember you told me that I was going to do this, but I'm ready for it. Is somebody ready to pray in that direction? God told Noah to go into the ark. And the way it was going, it seemed like it was not going to stop. But God remembered him. Oh, I got Noah here and these people and these animals. All right, it's time to stop the water. It's time for the water to come down. It's time for them to come out of that boat. <laughs> There's somebody here. God needs to remember you today. God needs to remember that you are in that ark. You are in that place. You are in Columbus, Ohio. That you are in that place or job. God wants you to remind him now father remember you told me i would get married this year father he wants to know if you even believe (laughs) what he told you would happen remind god 
of something. Yes, some of you, you know what I'm saying. In fact, God himself is bringing things to your remembrance that he wants you to talk to him about. Father, remember you told me I'll write a book. Father, you said you were going to do this. Father, please, I'm ready for this. Yes, 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 yes. You understand? Begin to say that. Begin to tell God. Tell God, Father, that dream you showed me two years ago, you said I was going to get a promotion. I, I'm ready for this promotion right now. Father, the, 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 that word you spoke over me, you said I was going to be pregnant by this time. Father, please remember me the same way you remembered Noah and you remember those people in the ark with him and the animals. Father, please do something. And da, 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 da. Whatever it is that's coming, somebody needs to be praying. Mm -hmm. Because God remembered them, and not only that, after he remembered them, the water began to recede, the flood water, because before it wasn't receding, it kept increasing, and it was getting higher and higher and higher. But God remembered Noah, so the attack is getting so much and so much and so much, but God is about to remember you. Father, you told me I will survive this. You told me this thing will not kill me. You told me this thing, nah, nah, nah. please remember me. And da, 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 da. Come on now, somebody pray, 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 pray. Yes, 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 pray. I don't know why God brought this up. And I don't even know why this happened today when I was talking to my son. But God allows things to happen so that way he can use me to bring it up here and give it like a prayer point for you guys to benefit from it wow <laughs> wow erv translation says but god did not forget about noah god remembered him and all the animals that were with him in the boat god made a wind blow over the earth and all the waters began to disappear god did not forget about you god's gonna remind you and remember you but you gotta start reminding him of things that he said that he would do for you. Yes, do it. Father, you told me I was going to get this. You told me I was going to do this. I believe and I'm ready for it. Please remember me today. Please make it happen for me. I am ready, Lord. I have waited for so long. It's been two years already. It's been four years already. It's been 10 years already. Please remember my case, Father. Please attend to my case, Lord. Please come to my rescue. Please answer me today. Please, I am ready. That's right. Remember me like you remembered Noah and his family and all the animals in the ark. I am ready for my own blessing. I'm ready for my reward. I'm ready to testify. I'm ready to hold my child. I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for my 2020 vision. I'm ready for my healing. I'm ready for my deliverance. Lord, remember me. So, Father, Lord, even as you have reminded me of this word, remember your children and everything that you have promised them for that begin to do for them in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been blocking this from happening in their lives for that today, I unblock it in the name of Jesus. Give them what you have promised them. Let them come back to testify in the name of Jesus. Let that flood in their life stop. Let that mountain come down. Let that obstacle be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is done. Oh, you're going to you're gonna see some of you will get some phone calls. Some of you will get emails. Some of you will get something that you've been waiting for a long time because God has remembered you today. Somebody tell God thank you. Say, thank you, Lord, for remembering me today. <laughs> Your case has been remembered today. Thank you, Lord, for remembering me today. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for remembering me. Because even Noah, at some point, will be wondering if God has forgotten about him in the ark. He's wondering. He's like, man, I didn't know this was going to stay long. I, 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 I thought by now we would be out of this place. It looks like the rain is still falling. The flood is It's like everything is just becoming worse. Lord, are we ever going to come out of this place? That's right. Don't you think Noah thought about that? Like, am I ever going to come out of this boat? <laughs> it's been months already. <laughs> but thank you, Lord, for remembering me today. Oh, yes, yeah, somebody's about to testify. I can feel it in the spirit already. 
testimonies will soon come in. Thank you, Lord, for remembering me today. And then another thing that God told me while the song was playing, he took me back to Matthew 11, the scripture that Jesus gave to me today when I was praying to him. Matthew 11 from verse 28. We're going to go back there and I'm going to tell you what God said. Because God said something when I was speaking in tongues earlier when I came online that he wants to um, allow him to clench you or something. He's going to remove people that are not good for you. How many of you remember that? Going to remove, you know, everybody in your life comes like for a season. And when the season is over, God's going to remove them and bring another, because some of these people from last season, they're not going to align with this new season that he's taking you. So God said, allow me to cleanse you. I think that was something that came out of my mouth when I was praying and talk. So right now, while this song was playing, he took me back to Matthew 11 from verse 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, right? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? And he said for him to give you rest, he's going to strip you of every weight. He's going to strip you of every load. He's going to strip you of everything that is going to slow you down or drag you backward or hold you down or become heavy on you so i saw a vision of somebody that was carrying a lot of things and it was so heavy on them and i saw jesus taking them off one by one. Oh god i wish i had a a picture of somebody carrying a lot of things on them and then i saw jesus taking it off one by one and that's what he meant by allow me to cleanse you like allow me to to take off this load it could be so much like worries or so much like maybe you're carrying so much people al along with you and all of them come with their own baggage and it's stressing you out or maybe you're friends with so many people and you're always settling disputes you know how some of you used to be very popular before you got saved you had like five best friends or four best friends and all day you'll be on the phone. One of them is upset at somebody. One of them is having issues with their marriage. One of So it's like they, they normally call you, right? And you will be on the phone trying to settle this issue. By the end of the day, you are all tired because you, you were dealing with this issue from this friend. You were trying to help this. And when God calls you, God takes you out of that. It takes all of those load away, all of those things, because it's not going to help you where he's taking you. So now it will be so quiet in your life. You're not calling anyone to try to settle anyone. You're not worried. It's like God is stripping you of the weight that is going to pull you down, that is going to occupy most of your day, that is going to stress you out, that is going to cause you a tax that you don't need, that is going to slow you down like you can't even run with all of those weights. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? So in this season, God says, I should tell you guys that he's going to cleanse you. He's going to take away anything that is not going to align with where he's taking you to in this season anything that is going to take you backward anything that is going to like make you stagnant anything that is going to be like a weight on top of you that will not make you to be able to run when he says run will not make you sleep well at night will give you so much worry god says he's going to strip them off of you so you can have that rest that he wants to give you so you can be light so that there will be no weight that you are carrying. Even some of you, God is telling me that you have so much of family um, family burden on you. You are the one that they come for. Everything God says is going to strip all of that off of you. And this is a season where you're going to take care of yourself and your immediate family, meaning your children, your wife, your husband. Before, it's like you're carrying the load of the whole family. You are the one that pays school fees for almost everyone, extended family it's so much on you you can barely sleep you can't even think well you're always thinking of this one's bill coming up that one and it's taking a toll on you you can't even really focus on yourself or your own family immediate family you can't even think right you're working so much you're getting so tired 
But God's going to strip you off of all of that. So that way you can have that rest. And that's the only way you can have rest. Because you can't say you have rest when you have all these responsibilities on you. You have all this like weight on you. You have all these worries on you. God says, allow me to cleanse you. Allow me to cleanse your life. Allow me to remove. If he releases somebody off your life, let them go. If he tells you this is enough, this season is done with this best friend, she got to go. Let her go. Maybe this best friend has so much drama. Or maybe she's not really in, 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 in line with where God is taking you at the moment. Maybe she's not ready to be saved. Maybe she's not ready to love God the way you love God. And God is taking you to a place and this is going to hold you back. This is going to be a load on you. This is going to be something you don't need. You have to keep explaining yourself why you did something or you have to keep explaining actions or you have to keep trying to, you know, pray for this same person all the time. God says he's going to strip all of that up so you can have peace, so you can have rest. And some of you, you know this is true because before you got saved, it was so much noise around you. And when you got saved, suddenly people, some of them stopped calling you. Some of them, it's God that made them to stop calling you because they are calling you would have been distracted. You understand what I mean? Some of them stopped answering your calls. It was God that did that. <laughs> God took them out from your life. So you can have more time for him. So you can hear his voice clearly. So you can have more time to pray, to study the word, to get to know Jesus. To be able to walk into this new place that you've come into. To be able to understand where God is taking you. So God shut all this noise. And you had some kind of peace. It felt lonely. It felt quiet. But it was needed. And you began to understand God's purpose for your life. You began to see life differently. You began to save money before you were always out there, always going out. You were always going to this one's event or that one event, always contributing for this meeting or that meeting. Now you don't even contribute for none of those things. You save money. People avoid you like you're a plague, but God allowed that because it's a new season. And you are heading somewhere. And it's going to be a peaceful journey. Not all, all those knowings. Sometimes you miss people. But after a while you got used to it. And God is doing something with you. It's a new season for somebody. It's a new dimension. Every time a new dimension comes. God strips off load and weight. So that you don't get dragged back to the old dimension. So you don't go over the same issue over and over. There are some battles that God wants you to be done with. God doesn't want you fighting the same old, same old battles. It's going to keep pulling you back. Forward ever, backward never. So God says, allow him to cleanse your life. Allow him to give you rest. Allow him to strip off the weight. Allow him to free you from things that are still in the old dimension that cannot come to the new dimension. People, places, things, worries, demons, allow him. Otherwise, you will be stuck in that place. Sometimes God wants us to move forward, but we keep looking back. And that's how people turn into a pillar of salt, like Lot's wife. She was supposed to keep going forward and not looking back, but she did look back. And that's how she died. So in this new season, God's about to give you rest. Allow him to give you rest. Allow him to do a quick work. Allow him to do, yeah, allow him to, to take up that weight, that load. That, that burden, that stress, that's right. Some people may be offended by this decision that God is going to make you like make. Some people will not be happy, but allow God. You have done your best. That season is over. It's a new dimension. And sometimes when God removes the old, he brings new things that would align with the new season. 
if God takes away something that has served you enough for the old season, but is now a new season, he's going to bring something better that fits the new season, the new place he's taking you. And you will be happy. And when that season two is over, God's going to give you, this is how it goes. That's right. And then that new season comes again. God's going to do some, he will shift some things around again. And then you see what I'm saying? Just allow God. Whatever he's doing, it's going to be the best for you. At first, it may seem like it's not. Like when God told me to come to Columbus, Ohio, people were sad thinking, oh, she's going to leave her parents and all of that. But when I came here, look what God has done with me. It's so peaceful here. I'm so blessed. I still talk to my parents. My mom comes once in a while when I'm traveling to take care of my son. But it's a new season. I can't imagine myself going back and living with them. But once upon a time, I lived with them for years and it was fun and it was wonderful. But then it was a new dimension and God took me to another state that is far. Driving is 17 to 18 hours from the other place. It seemed like, oh God, why are you taking me so far away? But it's so good here. So peaceful. So wonderful. I have a brand new house that God paid off. He blessed me. Oh my God, life is beautiful here. Remember I was living alone before I came to my parents? Things happened. I couldn't pay for things anymore. I had to move there. And that was that season. And I enjoyed it to the fullest. But then another season came. And I had to move far from them. It seemed like, oh God, why, why are you doing this? But now I'm happy. My mom even is happy too because now she travels a lot. I said, mommy, look at you. You are now a frequent flyer from Columbus to Houston. She said, yes. Yeah, so before, where was she traveling to nowhere? <laughs> she was always home. But now she's almost all the time going to the airport, coming back and forth. She loves it. So allow God to do what God is doing in your life and you will enjoy it. It will make sense eventually. Look at this picture. I told somebody to get me a picture with somebody carrying load. So now look at that. You got so much you're carrying and Jesus wants to give you rest. So first he will strip off things. He will take off that little box on the top. And that little box will cry. You will cry. Oh, ah, man. I remember when Apostle Christabel said she had a dream where I was climbing the mountain with my members and I carried her on her back, on my back. And she was so heavy. I carried her. It was painful, but I did all the way to the top of the mountain. And then everybody came back by themselves. Everybody walked. She walked down herself. So imagine me carrying all these loads. And God is like, it's enough. You've carried all these people for so long. Now I need all of them cut off. I need all of them gone. So he removes that one. Removes that one. Removes, removes, removes. Are you guys seeing? How many of you feel like you're carrying load like this picture you just saw? How many of you feel like you're carrying all these loads? Come on now. God's going to remove all these loads. And then he will give you rest he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light meaning the one i'm gonna give you is easy that's right you're not gonna it's not gonna be a burden to you like that it will be easy you won't need to cry every day. You won't have all these attacks anymore. You won't be stressed out. You won't be worried about all these people anymore. You will be able to focus on me, Jesus. You will have peace. Your back will be straightened. No more bent like that. Look at that. A lot of people say they are carrying so much load. You see? And it's stressful. That's why sometimes you wake up. You know? And you are so stressed out. So stressed out. Look at that. Look at that. 
Look at that. You're so stressed out. Look at this, people. Uh huh. God's about to strip off all of that. Take that all that off of you. He said, allow me to cleanse you. Um, allow me. Yeah. Strip you off of anything that is becoming a weight. That is causing you to be attacked. That is causing you to be stressed out. Jesus wants to remove it. Allow him. There's going to be some kind of disconnection that may hurt you. But at the end of the day, you will be happy it happened. Initially, you will not understand. But you will eventually. That's right. And he told me to read about Abraham, right? And Lot. Abraham loves Lot so much. But Lot was um, a load on him. And it started causing him problems. And God had to, you know, separate them. And even after separation, Abraham's heart was still there. And Abraham had to go into battle, gather men from his household to go fight war. That was still Lord. And eventually, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. God had to destroy it. And that was the end of it. We never heard of Lot again. Because God knew that this is going to, this man will keep looking back, keep worrying about this boy. So, you know what? Let's just go and destroy that place. Right? That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Allow me to cleanse your life, allow me to remove the load. Allow me to work in your life. Allow me to carry that burden for you. Don't hold on to it. Because sometimes you're holding on too tight to these things. You don't want God to take it. You don't really want it, but you don't want to let it go. <laughs> Who do you? Some of you are attached to your boxes. You're tied to your boxes. But you are complaining about it. But at the same time, you don't want it to go. <laughs> Who is that? Can somebody understand what I'm saying? You're so attached to the problem. I don't know. You want help, but then you don't want to let it go. This thing I'm preaching, only those with understanding will understand. Like... You know you need his help. You know you need you need to breathe. You know you need. But then it's like you don't want certain things to be gone. You still want to keep them. And God is like, this thing is causing too much stress for you. Allow me to remove it. I know the stress. I know where it's coming from. It's causing you grief. It's causing you money. Causing you pain, attacks. Allow me. <laughs> You're like, yeah, Lord, you can help me, but don't touch this one. Leave this one. I want this one like this. But but you're controlling everything. I can't I can't help you. <laughs> That's human nature. That's human nature. Just like my mom, she's had a car for Almost 20 years. And when God told me to buy her a car, she was still kind of attached to our old car. And I don't know, she just had this love for her car. So she eventually gave it, I think when we went to buy the car, to the car dealer guy. And now she's enjoying her new car. <laughs> but that car, she had it for, I think, 18 years or so. And there was an attachment to it. But the car was no longer good. Do you understand? But it's almost like she doesn't want it, but she wanted. I don't know. There's just this attachment to it. But now, uh, okay, my mom is even listening. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> it's like she's had it for so long, and she knows how to work. That even the door, I was mocking the door. That the door. It's, it's not working. She said, no, it's work. She knows how to fix the door. She knows, like, but, but God is like, 
allow me to give you a new car. Do you understand? And now she loves her new ride. I think I have the video of when I bought the car for her. This was like in 2020. 2020, right? Or 2021. Let's watch. Hello, everyone. God bless you. This is uh, the woman of God. Evangelist Princess Belenzi, yay! So God told me it's time for me to get myself a car. As you guys know, I've been blessing everyone, blessing people, you know, paying rent for people, giving people money, but I have never bought anything for myself. So God says I should get one car for myself and one for my mother. And here you go. This is mine. Come on now. The Toyota 4Runner 2021. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 <laughs> and this is my mom's a Toyota oh, yeah. a Highlander 2021. Hey. Wave your hand. Let me wave your hand. Let <laughs> me shout Toyota Highlander yeah. 2021. Yeah, I'm learning some features in <laughs> this car before I drive up. It's yes. so cute. Oh, so cute, so cute, so cute. Praise the Lord. All right, Hallelujah. let's let's look. At, you wanna? We've already we already have the inside of it. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and this is mine. Come on now, come take a look inside. This is my ride, my nice ride. We are in the VIP area because you know we are VIP. When you're in Christ, you are VIP. Very cute, very nice. Brand new, just how many miles? Like seven miles. Seven miles only. So it's just fresh. Fresh. Enough space for when we are traveling, like on a road trip. We're going to have a lot of space for our trip. It's a leather. I think leather interior, right? Yes, very Beautiful. nice. Leather. Yes, yes, so this woman of God this woman, this woman of God deserves it because this woman of God works so hard, always online preaching. But God said from now on I'm gonna yeah. be on the go. And I don't have a car for on the go. So yay! Praise the Lord for all of you that are praying to God for a car. Tap from this one. Receive your car in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now from that time till now, a lot of you have seen a lot of changes. I don't even have that car anymore. I now have a white one. Similar to that one, but a newer one. But that was when my mom got a new car and let go of that old car that she was so attached to. And she loves it so much. So God says, allow him to cleanse your life. Allow him to do a new thing. Allow him to carry the load, to remove those, those boxes. Do you understand? To take away these things. Does somebody understand this message? So God's going to do something in your life. Some things new some instructions like me i even moved here to columbus ohio and it didn't seem like it would be good at first in fact when i was even moving <laughs> i didn't even have luggage or anything except for a few clothes like clothes that i give in the program i i, I didn't have furniture i didn't have anything it's almost like I'm leaving everybody except for my son and then my keyboard is that followed me. It's like, what is she doing? She's just leaving everything behind. But now I got so much. I have a whole lot of stuff now. I allowed God. I moved with God. Let's watch that video again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is the woman of God. Apostle Belema Abili, a.k.a. Princess Belemzi. And I am on my way from Houston, Texas to Columbus, Ohio. I'm moving there because God wants me there. We've been on the road for over 10 hours, almost 11 hours driving from Houston to 
Columbus, Ohio, and it's snowing. So the drive has been kind of slow. I have with me Love, he's my driver, and my son, Michael. Our car is full, you know, I don't really have anything, so I don't, I'm, 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 I only have like a few, I think two or three boxes of my, of what to wear, that's it. But I'm traveling light, but we're moving permanently to Ohio. I'm obeying God because it's new dimension. I don't know what to expect, but I know it's gonna be the best and it's gonna be my best life. Yeah, in 2022. So let me show you guys what it's looking like out here. It's snow. And we've been here. The traffic has been stopped like this for like almost maybe 20 minutes. It's, it's just no movement so far. It's been like this for almost 20, 20 um, minutes. God told me to leave on the 3rd of February, 2022. And he told me to leave at 3 in the morning. I don't know what the 3's are for, but God has a reason. So once it was 3, we left for Ohio. And we've been here. It's almost 1.42 p.m. So it's almost 11 hours, really. And we still have about 11 hours to go. We should have been there sooner. But because of the weather, you know, whenever God sends you out, something is going to tell you, oh, why don't you wait for another day? Why don't you wait for another day? Oh, this is not a good time to travel. But there's never a good time. God's time is the best time. If God says go now, you go now. God has his reasons, you know. And I'm just that kind of person that once God says it, I'll do it. You guys know me now. I just have this radical faith. Once I hear my father's voice, I'm going. <laughs> Even as we went to go buy um, gas at the gas station, the Shell gas station, um, I went to go use the bathroom in there, and I saw these two um, these two guys as they were walking in. They had to, one of them with a walking stick held the door open for me. I was not close to the door, but he held it till I got there. I said, "Thank you so much, sir." So when I use the bathroom to um, when I finished using it and came out, he had already finished paying for his stuff. He all, he held the door for me. And when I came out, I said, God bless you, sir. And I was like, oh, it's cold. He said, oh, this ain't nothing. Um, this He said, this ain't nothing. It gets worse than this. We're used to this. I said, wow, really? He said, yeah. I said, yeah, thank you. So I now went to the car and I told love and my son, I said, this man just opened the door for me twice. And he said, this ain't nothing. Like this snow, this cold, all of this is nothing. That it gets worse than it is. And I just received some kind of strength from it. Because when we're coming, we're driving so slow. But after the, what the man said, we started repeating it. This ain't nothing. It gets worse than this. And man, we were speeding. <laughs> that thing just put strength in me. Like God made me go use that bathroom so his angel could speak to me. Because they were so nice, especially the one with the walking stick, the way he held the door for me. And then he he's the same one that opened the door for me when I was going. Like, there were people in the store. How is it that when I finish using the bathroom, you already finished paying? He wanted to make sure he speaks to me, and I just received strength. So God is going with us, and I'm happy. So God bless all of you. When God tells you to do something, do it. Just do it. For you to live your best life in 2022. You have to obey God. This is new dimension. God is taking me to a new place. I've never been there. But I'm excited because God picked the place. I don't even know where I'm going to stay. I don't even have any plans. But God is leading me as I'm going. I'm actually just excited. It is well. We just um, were purchasing our first property for the ministry. And I should be closing in a few days to finalize everything. And then we'll start to build but before then, I need a place to stay. But God's going to tell me where to stay once I get there. You know, you're a woman of God. I practice what I preach. I'm just like Abraham, you know. He left his hometown and God said he was going to show him where he would take him. He just left the house and expecting God to show him. And God did show him. So that's the same thing with me. God will show me when I get there. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I even quoted Abraham there. <laughs> I'm just like Abraham. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> so you guys know the story of this. When I was moving like that, when people saw that video, they're like, oh, she just left her family. And 
I didn't really have anything. I even know where to stay. But I allowed God to lead me. And God gave me a very beautiful life. You understand? Peaceful life. I have so much peace here. I even have a room for God that God himself said he wanted. Have my own house paid off. Like everything is just making sense. So whenever God's about to do another new thing again, he's going to take off some things again, add some more things. But you have to allow him. At first, it seems so like difficult. Seem like what? How many of you um, at first when I was moving from where my parents were to Ohio? Columbus, Ohio is not a place I've even done a program before. <laughs> How many of you were worried at first? But God was not worried. You know, God knew it was a good place. God knew it was a place of peace, a place of um, elevation, a place of where I would get my eyes to be healed, where I would not need to wear glasses or contacts anymore, a place where many things will happen. And that's exactly what's happening now. But at first, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like, oh, Lord, she would not have a studio anymore. She would not be in her parents' house anymore. And since that time, I've only visited once. Last year, March 17 weekend for my homecoming. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, we need to allow God to take away loads from us. To give us a new path, a direction that we need to enter the next phase of our lives. And for that to happen, we must not be attached to anyone or anything. You can't be attached to your job. You can't be attached to family. You can't be attached to friends. You can't be attached to anyone. Because if you're too attached to anything, it's going to be hard. For God to remove things from you. Like this man carrying all these boxes. If he's too attached to the top four boxes. And when Jesus wants to take them out. It's like no, 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 no. Those boxes, they mean a lot to me. I I have some things in there. I, I don't, no, no, no. I, I want those boxes. And he's like, well, okay, which one do you want me to take? You know, um, it's heavy, but I have so much that I put on box number one. And I... Box number one, I have a lot in it. I have my underwear, my um, my favorite jacket that I got 10 years ago. But you haven't worn it for 10 years. But yeah, but I, I, I'm keeping it for what? <laughs> Box number two, I have things from my, um, from my high school. And I don't know. <laughs> Box three, um, those are some... You know what, Jesus, just leave everything. I'm just going to carry everything. <laughs> Does somebody understand? Even some of you, when I tell you, go clean out your closet and give things that you don't you don't wear anymore. You go into your closet like, but I still like this one. I like this one. This one is nice. So, But you haven't even worn these things in years, but you just like having them. You like holding on to them. But there's somebody that needs it. Somebody that's going to wear it right now. Somebody that's going to really appreciate it. Somebody that's going to like take some nice pictures showing everyone what God blessed them with. You will still keep it in that closet for the next 10 years. But you want it. One day I will. Oh, this is my favorite dress. When was the last time you wore it? Five years ago. How is it your favorite when you don't even wear it all the time? Yeah, you're right. Um, but I really like it. I don't know if I'll ever find this style again. <laughs> but you, you you don't even wear it all the time. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm just using closet as an example. And that's why some people are still stuck with the same problems. Because every time God wants to do something for them, he they don't allow him. And they keep carrying, and then the load will increase because more will be added to it. And before you know, you are flat on your ground, on the ground. You can't even get up again. So God says, allow him to cleanse 
your life. Allow him to do a beautiful work in your life. Allow him to do something new for you. And I hope you guys are ready for the fasting that's coming up on Tuesday. It's for seven days. And it's titled, Jesus Help Me. Heaven's 911. We are going to call 911. But it's not your 911 here in America. It's the 911 in heaven. For God to help you. If there's anything troubling you. If there's anything that you need help with. God's going to come and help you. So we're going to start on Tuesday, March 26. Everyone is invited to start. And the scripture that I put for the fast is Psalm 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all their troubles. God's going to hear your cry. God's going to deliver you from all your troubles. Not some of your troubles. All of your troubles, all of your worries, all afflictions, all pain, all sorrow. But we have to fast and pray. And next weekend, we're also going to be meeting here in Columbus, Ohio for our Easter um, celebration, Easter weekend. So it's going to be combined with the fasting. A bunch of you are coming. We're fasting together. I'm hoping that God will give us some days to break. He always does. But even if he doesn't, he will strengthen us to complete. Never be afraid of fasting. Whenever you are afraid of fasting, it's that demon that is afraid. The demon doesn't want to go. Oh, yeah. It's that problem that is afraid. Oh, no, you can't do it. You know you can't do it. You're taking medication. Oh, you know you can't do it. Last time you almost died. Don't even try it. It's the problem that is speaking to you. <laughs> it's the demon that is speaking because the demon is afraid of leaving. Oh no, you know you have to eat. You know you can't. You know, you know, you know you need your food. You need your your, your medicine. You need your this. You need ah yeah, 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 yeah. And then when you don't do it, you even feel bad. Everybody else is doing it. Or you find out that it's not even as hard as you thought. God is making us break every other day or every day. or And you feel bad. You're like, I wish I had done it with them. I w even the devil will be mocking you. See, you can't even fast. Look at you. <laughs> he, he will say, look at you. You can't even fast. All you do is eat, eat, eat. Every time, eat, eat, food, food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the same voice that was telling you not to do it is the same voice that's gonna be mocking you so badly i'm telling you say so look at you you say you are in school of power they are all fasting and you could even do it and you are claiming to be a member here <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> what has this thing happened to before? You saw fast and you run. You're like, man, I don't know, man. This is not for me. Woman of God, I'm going to pass on this one. <laughs> I'm going to pass on this one. This is not me. It's too much. And then you find out later that they did the fasting. And it wasn't even as hard. God let them break. Or it was easy. And too many testimonies coming out from it. And you're feeling bad. Like throughout the whole time. Even after the fast. You are crying. You're like man. I'm such a failure. I couldn't even fast. I should have just done it. I'm never able to fast. Da, 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 da. You'd be sad. While we are testifying. <laughs> we are marching forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. God, that this song is prophetic. School of power is marching forward, hallelujah. Amen, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen, we are marching forward, hallelujah. This ministry, if you even miss one day, <laughs> one video, you miss everything like this this audio now that I came on to do. If you miss this one and you come on tomorrow on tomorrow's audio, you miss a lot. Not to talk about one week. 
one month one month is like you're no longer a part of us uh -uh, one month is too far now <laughs> one week and when we are saying something you're like wait what happened what do you mean oh what did she do oh what did he do uh, somebody help me nobody's even answering wait have you noticed i've seen people come to the videos and be asking questions that what happened to him what are, what happened to her what are, what is woman of god talking? i i don't see anybody even responding to them <laughs> <laughs> they will be asking what did that one do uh, what what is what is she talking about i've never seen anybody respond to them it's like people are not even caring who is asking questions like sweetie go watch the videos and stop asking questions <laughs> like, you didn't come to class for days and you are asking us man you need to go check the notes or something we can't explain. It's a long story. A lot has happened. <laughs> that's how this ministry is. And that's how Jesus' ministry was too because he's going from town to town. He said he must go from town to town to preach for this is why he came. So if the disciples say, okay, you know what? I'm going to meet you in another town because I'm kind of busy. <laughs> By the time you want to come to that town, he's not even there anymore. You will not be able to catch up with him, so just follow him wherever he goes. Otherwise, it will be too much for, for you. That's right. <laughs> Mark 1 verse 38. But Jesus replied, we must go unto other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. This is why I came. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. So if you don't follow him, there was no Facebook, there was no um, YouTube, there was no, you see what I'm saying? It's like, uh, you got to follow him, otherwise you're missing out because he's going from one town to another town. Like me now, this year alone, I went to Kenya, from Kenya, I went to Philadelphia, gone to um, Connecticut. Now I'm going to be in Columbus. Before you guys, you know, I told you guys I'm supposed to go to Florida. Before you know, within this year alone, I would have gone to many places. Oh, is Apostle here? No, she's over here. Is, where is she? Oh, okay. All right. So when is Apostle come here? Oh, she just came. She left a few days ago. <laughs> so you got to keep up with it. You have to watch the videos. Got to listen to the audios. Yes, even if you're doing something, play it, let it just play in the background so you can hear what's going on. That's how you know you are connected to a place. Don't say, I am a member of School of Power. You're not even watching the video. Like now, I was online and somebody messaged me. Say, woman of God, I know you are online, but I have something bothering me. She was messaging me things that don't even make sense. It's not even related to what I'm doing. I said, sweetie, the next time I'm going to block you because you are distracting me. This is an evil spirit. You're supposed to pay attention. It's like your teacher is standing before the classroom and teaching the class and somebody is texting the teacher and this phone is going off. The person is in the class so texting the teacher and the teacher stops what he's doing on the board and is reading the message. Sweetie, can't you see he's teaching? When he's done, you can text him. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> when he's done... Don't be a distraction. Some people are actually watching, but they're not paying attention. Like they're listening, but they don't even know what I said. If I even ask, which Bible scripture have I read today? In fact, let me ask. How many of you can mention at least two of the scriptures or three scriptures that I've covered today on this audio? Or five scriptures that I covered on this audio. Come on now, surprise me now. Go ahead, quote the scriptures, at least three or five. Some people don't even know one scripture that I quoted. They didn't hear anything because they were not even listening to me. <laughs> they say, ah, you quote a scripture? When was that? <laughs> they say, when did you ever quote a scripture? We didn't hear a scripture. We were just dancing to vindicate me, oh Lord. Because some people like some people like dancing only. You see them dancing. Mm? At least three of the scriptures. Three. Or if somebody gets five, 
of the scriptures that I've read since I came here. Five. Surprise me now. Let's see. Some of you can't. Some of you just have one. But I say at least three. I'm still waiting. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Genesis 8, verse 1. Genesis 7, Matthew 11. Keep going. Keep going. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're doing one by one. Do a lot. Let's see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And be on point with it. Look at Temi. I guess because she's the one posting the scriptures. She remembers it. Let's see somebody else. She got how many? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good job. Who else? <laughs> All right, let's see. Come on now. Let's see. Bring it on. Bring it on. I want you to be specific on, on what I read. Huh? Mm, okay. Uh-huh. People are copying and pasting from other people. <laughs> so people are looking at the comments and copy. <laughs> oh my God. So people are looking at other people's comments. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I see you. I see you. That's right. You know you you know you're guilty. I see you. You're laughing now. Come on now. You're copying from somebody. <laughs> oh my god. Eh? They're like, wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, she did. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. This is so much fun, eh? See? I love you try, but mm -mm. Nobody got it right. <coughs> Some of you are just paraphrasing or generalizing. I want someone to give me on point. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. See? Some people are giving me Romans 8. Did I read Romans 8 on this audio? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> I tell you, people put me on, but they don't. some of them don't listen to me. They keep distracting me. And then they wonder why their life is all messed up like this. Father, thank you for this ministry. Thank you for my life. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out all the time to help your children. Thank you for this wonderful people that you brought here. Nobody can come to me unless you draw them to me. That's what Jesus Christ said. So thank you for drawing all of them here. Thank you for giving me a voice. Thank you for using me for your glory. Thank you for putting your power in me. Thank you for vindication. Thank you, Lord, for the book. Thank you for the power in the book. Because it's one thing to have a book, and it's another thing for the book to have power in it. So thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. I give you all the glory, all the honor. And in this season, as you are stripping off weights from people, Father, help them, oh God, to be able to allow you to do this in their lives. So you can beautify their lives in the name of Jesus. And God just told me something. He said that there's somebody here that you are dating somebody that God has been telling you to, to let go of that relationship. But you're not letting go. You're still holding on to it. And he said because of that, your husband is not coming. You are holding on to a relationship. It's like a three-year-old relationship. And God is telling you to let it go. But you're still holding on. And he said this guy doesn't even love you. This guy treats you badly. But you're still there. You pray to God. You cry to God. And God is saying you have to let go. But you are still there. And he said because of that, your husband is not coming. So you've been with this guy for three years. I even see this guy punch you in the face one time. But you're still holding on to it. He said because of this. Your husband. You see what we were just talking about? stripping off things i'm just praying and i i saw this clearly like you gotta allow god to cleanse your life for three years you're in a relationship you're not happy but you're still hanging in there and god said because of that your husband is not coming and this person abuses you too and this is going for all of you here some of you are uh, in relationship that you're not supposed to be in. You're just hanging in there when God wants to give you the one he has for you. 
keep hanging in there. You will never get the right one. <laughs> I'm just hanging in there. How is it going? I'm hanging in there. Hanging in there for what? God did not create you to be hanging in there. God wants to give you a place of peace, a place of rest. Stop holding on to the things that you're just hanging in there. If you're not happy, come out. Especially if God has told you to come out of it. So I pray that God will help you to come out of that mess, that abusive relationship. So that he can give you the right one that he has for you. In Jesus name. Amen. There's somebody, God is showing me, you are doing like um, an like a hair braiding business. But God says you need to go to college, like you need to go to school. But you're doing hair braiding business. God said that is not bad, but that's not what he wants for you as like, like you need to go to college, you need to have a college degree, and you can still do this on the side, but you're not supposed to just do that only for your life. You're supposed to have a degree. You're supposed to go to school. And you can do this at like part time or on the side. But you're making it full time. And that's not what God wants for you. So I don't know who you are. That That's good. But he said you need to go to college. I think God has already told you this before. But it's like you're scared of school. I think I was talking about school the other day. You're afraid that you won't do well. But God wants you to go to college, go to school. That's right. So there are some of you, God has told you things to do, but fear is not letting you. So I command that fear to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Do you know when God tells you to do something, God has put power in that go. When, God, when he says go, there's power in the go. Go to college. All you need to succeed is in the go. I've told you that before, right? So you don't have to be afraid. When he says go here, go. When he says stay here, stay. When he says do this, do. Time is running out. And sometimes some of these assignments, they have timing. When that timing is over, when that time that he wants it to happen is over, then even if you try to do it, you can't do it again. Because an angel is released to help you for that time that you are supposed to do that thing. And when this angel goes back to heaven, you're going to struggle. But when this angel is around to help you, it's going to come with grace. You will find yourself doing something you never thought you could do. And when you even finish, you'll be like, I don't even know how I did that. I don't even know, like, 24-hour programs that I've done. I'll be sitting down preaching for 24 hours, doing deliverance, healing, singing, praising. I've done, like, four or five of those programs. And right now, I don't even know how I did 24 hours. Some of those 24-hour programs, I didn't sleep the night before. And I will go there, and I will be so sleepy, but God would help me through it all. Do you know what 24 hours is? Two 12 hours combined. <laughs> and it's 24 hours. We don't, like, we're not cheating or anything. 24 hours. And God will help me. I will complete. There was one of them that I did in my former studio. Before leaving the house, I prayed to God that I don't want to use the bathroom until I finish. I did not go to the toilet to pee or anything for 24 hours. It was when I came back home. After I even sitting for one hour when the program ended, I was talking to some people before I left to go home. Total of almost 26 hours. It was when I was taking a shower that I finally realized that I had not peed for 24 hours. And that's really impossible to have because normally all day in the house, I would have gone to pee like at least four, five, six times. I sat in that hall and I didn't pee. I didn't go to the toilet. I didn't leave the hall. And I'm wondering, how did I do that? Because of grace, God assigned an angel to help me succeed. So if God is telling you to do something, grace has been given for that thing. An angel has been released for it. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? So what has God told you to do recently? Don't be afraid. Heaven has already 
giving their support, you will succeed. The devil will say, well, I'm going to try my best to stop her. Do you know sometimes the enemy already knows he will fail, but he's going to try anyway. Like he knows he's not going to succeed, but he's still going to try anyway. He said, well, I know I'm going to fail, but I'm going to try anyway. Because <laughs> that's just how he is. That's how he is. He likes to try anyway. He knows he will fail. He knows he won't succeed. But he's going to try anyway. But you are thinking, oh, I'm not going to do well. Too many attacks. And the one attacking you knows he's not going to succeed. <laughs> he knows he will fail. But he's just trying anyway. But you have already given up. Uh, it's too hard. I can't. And the devil is like, look at this one. Like, <laughs> you better go and try it because God has already given you so much power to do this. When I was praying earlier today, I saw a lot of angels. And God was telling me that if only people know the amount of angels he sends to protect them, they will not live in fear. I saw angels with swords and spears and all that. It was a lot of them. He said, if only people know the number of angels that he has given them to protect them, that they will not live in fear. They will not walk in fear. They will not act in fear. They will not talk in fear. <laughs> they will not sleep afraid. How many of you deal with fear sometimes? Like some of you, you're afraid of many things. Afraid to talk. Afraid to go out. Afraid to succeed. Afraid to do anything. Like you just have this constant fear. Afraid that people may laugh at you. Afraid that your business will not work. Afraid that you will fail. Afraid that you will not be able to pay your rent. Like, <laughs> this thing, you're not supposed to be afraid like this. When you start out anything being afraid, that's failure already. And God says, if only you know the amount of angels that have been released to help you, to protect you, you're not going to leave in fear. So everybody put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you. I command that spirit of fear to come out of you now in the name of Jesus. I cast out this demon from you in the name of Jesus. Go to hell where you belong and don't you ever come back. You are free from today. You will no longer be afraid. Receive boldness from heaven. Be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Go and shine. Go and do that thing that God has told you to do boldly in Jesus' name. Amen. When God sends me to go to places, places that some people have said, oh, this place is full of witchcraft or stuff like that. I'm not afraid. I was talking to somebody yesterday, a woman of God, and she said she went to um, Minnesota for a funeral. I think a member's child had died. And this person is so young. And she said, woman of God, it's just so much death going on and young people. She said right there in the morgue, there were like four young people, young people that died. Like she doesn't know why a lot of young people, Africans, are dying like that. I said, oh, Minnesota, you know, it's a lot of witchcraft there. She said, yes, it's true. And she was talking of how that was where she first started her church. But the witchcraft was so much, she had to run out of there. And then I realized that I had been to Minnesota twice for Holy Ghost Encounter. And I also remembered that I used to have a lot of Liberian members that live in Minnesota, even one of my workers um, used to leave, one of my workers that used to work for me lived there. She told us one time that she had a dream that in one of the ponds in Minnesota, that a snake came out, opened his mouth, and a head entered the mouth. I said, wow, that's a terrible dream. And then they were telling me of how most of the Liberians that live in Minnesota, they try to leave, but they, they can't. Sometimes they leave and they come back. And then they would tell me of a lot of witchcraft going on. And I used to have a lot of them from there. Even when I went there, I'll do a lot of deliverance there. I remember my first 
program there on my second day. Um, I went to sleep and I had a dream. I was pulling out a long cliff clear thing from my throat like snake but clear it was like i pulled it out and i put it in a plate and it just it was so long so when she was telling me this i was like wow father really saved me he sent me to <laughs> places of witchcraft and i came out alive i even saw powerful deliverances in my dream and i was like wow so when god sends me out to Holy Ghost encounters, to territories full of witchcraft, even Liberia. Those ones, that one, I, I didn't even sleep for five days. God took sleep out of my eyes. And the only time I tried to sleep, I almost died. I was alone in my room and I ran to my bathroom kneeling down and just, I could sense that there was war going on in the spirit. They were planning to kill me there. Witches and wizards didn't want me in their country. But God brought me out alive because God sent me there. In fact, when they canceled me, canceled my hall that I rented, the church hall, I was thinking that was a sign that I didn't need to go. But God told me to keep going. And I'm like, but we don't even have a venue. And the event is in three days or so. And I entered that plane without a venue. But God made a way and we got a place. And God showed me a dream of crowd coming. But God saved me because he sent me to go. And then there was a boy, an 11-year-old boy, that confessed that he was part of an Illuminati and he was sent to come and kill me. I don't know if you guys saw that. Like That's like one of the shocking things I've ever seen in my programs. They said that they sent him as a boy to come because I love kids and I won't suspect that he's evil. So he came to kill me. But he said because of the number of angels in the room, he couldn't kill me. Were you guys not shocked hearing that from an 11-year-old boy? <laughs> and we asked him, how were you going to kill me? He said they had two people in the hall. One lady had a shirt with skull on it, like a head, a skull on it. And another one had a like a demonic-looking shirt that he was going to use those two shirts to project. And then I would start to choke, but nobody would know it's him. He said, but he couldn't do it because of, he said, people need to, people need to um, open their eyes that this woman of God, so many angels are with her. He said that there were more angels in the room than there were people. And that room was fully packed. You guys know the Liberian video that I like to show. It was fully packed. Let me show you guys just a clip of it. Now you see that room, the guy said, the little boy said that there were more angels in that room than the people in that room. This is a small boy confessing. He said, all of you, your eyes need to open that there are more angels in this room than all the people in this room. He said, because of that, he couldn't kill me. <laughs> he said, he came out when I told people to come out for repentance, for salvation prayer. He came to kill me. But he couldn't because he said this woman of God has so many angels and there are more angels than people in the room that you all need to pray for your eyes to open. That the way he would have done it, that I would just be choking on there and nobody would know it's him. They would just think I got an attack and he would just walk away. <laughs> You guys heard him now. <laughs> this is not a man that was saying it. A kid. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> this was a kid. I think that day my members all over the world were like, Jesus. Father, thank you for protecting our woman of God. <laughs> the video is still on social media. You can go find it. My Liberia event. I even prayed for his whole family. He talked about how he afflicted his mother, his father. His grandfather's hand, he said that was a stone that they put in it. The man's hand was bent. This boy, afflicted. he worked with the devil to afflict all his family. So he brought them all, and I prayed for all of them. And, and these, are, these are children, you will think they don't know anything, but they've been initiated to some cult, and 
if God is with you, I'm telling you, these people cannot harm you. You will be busy doing what God told you to do. And somebody is manifesting somewhere, <laughs> confessing, <laughs> talking about how he came to kill you, but it didn't work. And they already were doing videos about me, warning me not to come to the country, but we didn't know that a little boy would come there wanting to kill me. And they said, because you love kids, they knew. That's why they sent him, because they know that I love kids and I will not suspect him. <laughs> I'm like, Father, <laughs> Father, thank you for saving my life. <laughs> So even though that one didn't succeed, they still tried in the room when I went to sleep after five days of no sleep. But God saved me again. So all of you do not live in fear. The God who sent you will go with you. The God who sent you will give you protection, heavenly protection. He will not send you empty handed. He will not tell you to do something and not back you up. Stop worrying about who's going to attack me, who's going to do this. God is more powerful than all of them. Unless he didn't send you. And even if he didn't send you, if you really believe in God and what you're doing is something good, God's still going to fight for you. That's right. God will never let the enemy overpower you. So I've been to many countries. In fact, two days ago, God, I was reading about Abraham and Lot and all the promises that God was making um, Abraham. And God told me to go in my memo and look at the first set of um, things that I wrote down. And I found a promise that God made me in 2016 when I started preaching. November, I was doing like a fasting or so. And God gave me this promise. I think it came in my dream as a wind and he spoke. I don't know, but I don't remember exactly, but I have a video of it. And I went to go read it. This is it, right? November 30th, 2016. I was fasting and this was day three of my fast. God came in my dream, in my room, and this is what he said. He said, I will go with you wherever you go. And I will fight for you. I even did a video about it. I will go with you wherever you go. And I will fight for you. I mean, if you remember me telling you this from 2016. This is a promise that God made me. I have preached about this. I have talked about it. He said he will go with me wherever I go and he will fight for me. So when I was reading about Abraham and all the promises God was making him, God made me go find, this is one of the first, first promises that God made me. He promised to go with me wherever I go and fight for me. So I started praying and I started listing all these countries and all these places that I've gone to. I said, Father, you have been fighting for me. And you have been going with me just as you promised. I went to Liberia and came out alive. I went to Australia and came out alive. I went to Italy and came out alive. I went to Kenya and came out alive. I went to Nigeria and came out alive. I went to Canada and came out alive. I went to Cyprus and came out alive. I went to Jamaica, came out alive. I went to Bahamas, came out alive. I went to Germany, I came out alive. I went to London, came out alive. I went to Austria, came out alive. I went to France, I came out alive. I went to many places, many countries, Dubai, I came out alive. I went to Minnesota, I came out alive. I went to Philadelphia, came out alive. Went to New York and came out alive. It's almost like I was making a song out of it. But I was thanking him. I said, you have kept to your word. You have kept to your promise. You say you will go with me wherever I go. And see, when I go to some of these territories, I do some really powerful deliverance there. 
<laughs> the kind of deliverance that sometimes the demons will be threatening me. Timbelema, leave us alone. What have you come to do here? Why are you? We are going. We are coming for you. We we were, we are coming to destroy you. I've I've seen demons threaten me so much. And I will go like the first time when I went to Australia. It was only me that went. I went to Sydney. I went to um, Melbourne. Oh my God! It was a lot of deliverance. Even Dokas was there. Yes, it was a lot of deliverance. I was all by myself. I felt so many angels with me in my room. I I, I felt like I went with so many people. <laughs> it was so many deliverance. To the point that after day three in Melbourne, day four, people were going there looking for me and I was not even there. <laughs> and I went, Australia was the longest flight I've ever had. 17 hours non-stop flight. A big old ocean. Like It's like ocean from beginning to end. The biggest ocean in the world. And they call that place down under or something something on the man that place so many people are afflicted man so many demons and so many i'm telling no wonder god stopped me from going this time it was a lot of deliverance and i came out alive i was just thanking god i said you really kept to your word you went with me wherever i went even bakana my hometown that they say don't come there without security. I went and I came out alive. I walked and I came out alive. Do you know when I left my hometown after walking the place in my town, I saw this woman standing on the water. She had like a stick. Her hair, were, her hair was braided and like um, white hair braided. And she, she had a rod and she was angry, like, why? Like, it's almost like they didn't know I was coming. God took them unawares because I was in Cyprus. So I'm like, I thought these demons, they knew everything. How come they didn't know I was coming to, <laughs> to walk there? Like, I took them unawares. She was like, why? She was shouting. It's like the queen or the goddess of the sea or the queen of the coast. She stood on the water and she was so angry. I saw her, but I had already left. And I came out alive. God is so good. So now I'm trying to encourage somebody here. Do not be afraid. If God tells you to do something. Do it. God is with you. You will come out alive. In the name of Jesus. So God bless all of you. I'm going to go now. So I can rest. Watch this from the beginning. And prepare for our fasting. God is coming to vindicate somebody. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to leave you guys with the song, Vindication. Enjoy it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Vindicate you, just like he vindicated.
vindication. It is coming soon. It is coming soon. Your vindication. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Vindication. Vindication. Oh yeah, it's time for you to dance. Come on! 